indoors. So the Sooners, after winning the, the toss of the coin, rather than deferring, said, we want the football. And here to see what they do with the football is the Sooner play-by-play -play voice, Bob Berry. Thank you very much. The officials for tonight's game, the referee is Steve Juszczyk. The umpire, Rusty Vince Spindell. The judge is Gerald Height. The side judge is Ted DeFilippo. The field judge is Garland Old. The linesman is Cliff Hedrick. And the back judge is Gary Dankowitz. Syracuse will be kicking off from right to left. I suppose that south to north really makes no difference because no wind, as mentioned. But it's from right to left. And kicking off for the Syracuse team will be Sean Reale. Sean Reale from Bay Village, Ohio. Born in Miami, Florida. Surprising number of players on the Syracuse team from the state of Florida. We're set to go as referee Steve Juszczyk says let's play ball and the season's underway. A kick downfield. Darius Johnson takes it eight or nine yards deep in the end zone and the Sooners will start first and ten at their own 20-yard line. So we're just underway after a tremendous kickoff and the Sooners will have it first down ten yards to go from their own 20-yard line. Check the backfield. It's expected to be Derek McGee, Dwayne Chandler, and James Allen in the eye with P.J. Mills and Albert Hall, the wide receivers. Gary McGee steps into the huddle. Mike, you, you got to know that he's been there before with Arizona State a few years ago, but he, he's, uh, he's got to be excited about this first time in a couple of years. Dwayne Chandler is the fullback. Tailback is James Allen. Wide receivers left and right from the Oklahoma 20. Garrick McGee fakes to his fullback. Pitches. Reverse. Allen goes to his left. He said cuts outside. Up the 23 to the 25. Spins at the 27. All the way to the 28-yard line. That's the cutback play that worked so well against Texas A&M a year ago. Bob Watson Brown said in a meeting that we had Thursday, he's so much more impressed with this year's team. He said he wasn't sure last year's team could have come up here and beaten Syracuse but he has great faith that this year's team has the ability to do so. That was an eight-yard pickup on the first carry of the season for James Allen from Winnie Wood, Oklahoma. Sooners break huddle. P.J. Mills to the left, coming wide to the right, Albert Hall. The tight end is Jason Herman. There is the pitch to Allen, sweeping left. He's at the 30, he's at the 35, and he's knocked down at the 36-yard line, brought down on the play by Dan Cooley, the, left, you know, the inside linebacker. He's that guy with his sixth year of eligibility. So the Sooners pick up their first first down. They ate eight yards on first down and got seven on the second time they carried the ball. Last year, the Sooners averaged about five option plays per game. Watson Brown said this year, probably about 10. The Sooners don't want the defense to dictate McGee carrying the ball, particularly tonight in his first game. So you probably won't see a lot of options in tonight's game only. Sooners send two wide receivers to the right. Albert Hall and P.J. Mills. Derek McGee hands off a spinning move. Allen gets to the 40. He spins again and gets the 41. What a great move. At the line of scrimmage, he was hit initially. He spun to his left and got free up to the 41 for a total of uh, five yards. Conley had two arms on him. And uh, he spun away from out of both his arms and got five up to the 41. Bob, we've touched on it. You did so with Coach Gibbs in the uh, pregame about the sixth year of eligibility and having nine surgeries, that he is the heart and soul of this defense. They don't know if he's going to hold up. He didn't scrimmage that much preseason. It'll be interesting to see what happens. All right, the Sooners now will have a man on the wing. That's Allen in motion. Gary McGee on the handback play to Chandler. He's headed about the line of scrimmage this time. Gets a yard, maybe to the 42, perhaps 43. Nice job by uh, Ed Hobson, the nose guard, who stayed at home. That time that the sweep was to the right, it appeared, but he faked the pitch to Allen sweeping right, handed off to Chandler to pull that going left, and they marked the ball down at the 43, so a gain of two, and brings up the Sooners' first third down situation. They have three yards to go on a third down play at the Syracuse, at the Sooner, 42, 43 yard line. And keep in mind, because of the noise, the Sooners probably will not be able to check off. Watson Brown has signaled in the play, and that's the one the Sooners are going to have to run. Three wide receivers to the right on this third down play. Derek McGee, flat pass, caught by but P.J. knows the 42, 45, 48, and he's out of bounds, and it appears to be a first down. What a nice play. That was a pass to the right side from Derek McGee. Actually, a flat pass to the near side. Mills caught it at the 41, which was two yards behind the line of scrimmage, and was rolled out of bounds very, very close to the first down. If he, not, uh, if he did not pick it up, I believe he did. And they do move the chain. The Sooners have another first down. Bob, you've described it well, but the Sooners on almost every single play have started, even when that last pass play developed, as a 
misdirection. They'll go right and then come back left. They'll pull a guard on the running plays, but it's been misdirection on almost every play. Sooners have two first downs on the drive. They have new life at their own 47 first and 10. Derek McGee pitches the ball back to Allen. He hits a hole to the right side, crosses the midfield stripe. He's still battling his way. The ball comes loose, but he was whistled down at the Syracuse 49-yard line. So a pickup from the 47 in Oklahoma territory to the Syracuse 49, a four-yard game. And the Sooners have a second down six at the 49 in Orangeman territory. First time the Sooners have been in the Orange territory. Juwan Penny replaces Albert Hall, wide receiver. Derek McGee has the signal from the sideline. And the Sooners huddle with the ball at the Syracuse 49. No score, 12.06 to go in the first period. Juwan Penny wide to the right, P.J. Mills left. Here's Derek McGee handing off to Allen. Goes to his left, cuts back to his right. He's down across the 45 and down inside the 45 to about the 43-yard line. Tackled by Tony Jones, the free safety. What a great move at the line of scrimmage by Allen, the tailback, James Allen. Absolutely, Bob. I asked Watson Brown which of the linemen had great balls. He said Mike Chuck Langston, our center, and Ben Cabell were outstanding. And on that last play, again, a little bit of a misdirection. It was a great block by Langston that allowed Allen to squirt through the left side, and they'll measure for the first down. A great game deserves a great beer. Even a good game deserves a great beer. And that's natural life for Anheuser-Busch. For those good times with good friends, it's only natural. There was a measurement for the first down in the area of the Syracuse 43. It was just a bit shy, so it'll be third down and less than a yard just in the area of the 43-yard line Syracuse territory. Allen has five carries for 30 yards in the game. He's been a tailback since the game began, and the Sooners have had the ball since we started time here. And in now 11.46 to go in the first quarter. They started the drive at the 20 and are in their eighth play of the drive. High formation, James Allen at tailback, and Derek McGee wants a timeout. We have flag thrown. He did not get the time call. I believe it'll be delay of the game. Let's check it before we... Uh, here's the referee, Steve Juszczyk. Dead ball foul, delay of... Illegal procedure is the signal. The Sooners will be penalized five yards. Remember, they had third and less than a yard to go. That'll move the ball back up to the 48-yard line. And let's go down to Mark Matthew on the sideline. Tell you what, Bob, Gary Gibbs not too happy with that call right there. Big difference between third and one and third and six, especially around the midfield stripe. The official indication from the uh, referee out there was that somebody moved. Somebody got a false start out there. I didn't see it. Garrick McGee immediately called time and backed out of there. And, and maybe they whistled McGee for that, uh, that flag there. But Gary Gibbs is upset with that. He's questioning Watson Brown and also the sideline official trying to find out why that penalty was called. We have timeout. No score. Oklahoma and Syracuse. This is the Oklahoma Sooner Network. Want your dollars to do more? Then you should bank at the First State Bank of Idabel. Get your downtown bank. If you want financial services that really meet your needs, friendly people to wait on you, a relaxed atmosphere, then you want the First State Bank of Idabel in the heart of downtown Idabel. If you have your heart set on a new car or a complete refurbishing of your home, come in and talk to the friendly loan officers at the First State Bank of Idabel, an equal housing lender, member FDIC. Eddie Allen, your friendly hometown pharmacist, after 20 years has moved to a new location. Eddie Allen is now open in Piggly Wiggly Broken Bow. He's taken all the vet supplies with him along with everything else. If you've been taking your prescriptions to Eddie Allen, now take them to Piggly Wiggly Supermarket in Broken Bow. Eddie Allen, your friendly hometown pharmacist, looks forward to serving you at Piggly Wiggly Supermarket Broken Bow. The phone number is 584-5841, 584-2, or 584-3. inches shy of a first down on a third in inches, but a penalty moved them back to the 48 and a half, and then a pass failed. Now it's fourth down, and Scott Blanton will check into the game to punt for the University of Oklahoma. He was 41 and 41 on PAT. He's averaged 36.9 yards per kick a year ago, and he'll be standing at his own 37 as the line of scrimmage is the Syracuse 48 and a half. We have no score. 11 and a half minutes to go first period. Blanton kick. His signal fair catch coming up and taking a very short kick at the 19-yard line is Marvin Harrison. So the kick went from the 48-yard line, let's call it, 
in Syracuse territory. Timeout on the field. No score. Oklahoma and Syracuse. 11:25 to go first period. This is the Oklahoma Sooner Network. Some people are still confused about dry beers. Just what is this Bud Dry? A powdered beer mix? Some water conservation thing? Well, I need a towel. No, no. Bud Dry is simply dry brewed. Why? So it's less filling like a light beer ah. and has a lot more taste. Oh. Hey, why do you have all the answers? Why ask why? For a beer that's beyond question, try Bud Dry. And if you're still asking why, pay closer attention next time. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Imagine Memorial Stadium overflowing with men. Now consider that each and every man in the stadium has prostate cancer. That's how prevalent this most ignored cancer is today, and it will kill 35,000 this year. Baptist Medical Center wants you to know the more you can learn about prostate cancer, the better prepared you are to fight it successfully. The first step is a simple and quick screening. To schedule your screening and for more information, call the Baptist Care Line at 946-CARE. That's 946-2273. We're back with you at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. Sinners in Syracuse, no score with 11.25 to go first period. As the Sinners draw from their own 20 to the Syracuse 43, then a five-yard penalty moved them back to the 48, and a third down pass failed, and the Sinners punted 30 yards, and it's Syracuse with their first offensive possession from their own 20-yard line. Your local Oklahoma Dodge dealers are proud to sponsor Sooner football broadcasts. See the new Dodge Ram only at your local Dodge dealer today. It's loaded with safety features like a driver's side airbag and standard rear anti-lock brakes. Dodge Ram, the rules have changed. Syracuse breaks the huddle. Kevin Mason, their senior. Quarterback, 6'3", 206, although he did not start a year ago. They have the I formation with Kirby Dardar at tailback. And the fullback is Terry Morris. Wide receivers, Martin Harrison wide to the right. Wide to the left is Jason Wilson, whose actual first name is Sermon, believe it or not. The centers have in their defensive backfield, Darius Johnson, Anthony Fogle, John Anderson, and Larry Bush. Here we go. First snap from scrimmage for Syracuse. No score first period. Kevin Mason sends a man in motion. That's the tight end from right to left. Chenoweth. There's a hand off the fullback. You know he fakes to him. Pitches back to Dardar. Being chased by Fogle. Gets away from Fogle. Crosses to the 25 of the 26-yard line. Well, the fake to the fullback. And then the pitch sweep right. And he got away from Fogle, who, ch who chased him down in the backfield. Anderson finally makes the stop. But again on the first play from scrimmage of the year for Syracuse to the 26-yard uh, line. So a gain of six and a second down play and four. Kevin Mason, all eyes will be on him. He's thrown only 25 passes in three years, has not redshirted, and has not been a starter in the three years he's been at Syracuse. High formation, Kirby Dardar the tailback, Morris the fullback. Second down play from the 26, need to go to the 30. Gift to Dardar, over right tackle, cracks up for the first down. Across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Dropped by Tyrell Peters, the linebacker. Good hole over the right side, opened up by Sheldon Prescott and Jim Ledger. So Syracuse has the ball. Brent DeQuasey on the tackle at the 32. They picked up six yards on each of the first two carries. They have their first down, Syracuse does. We have no score. Syracuse Orangemen at their own 31-yard line. Actually, they're caught between the 31 and 32. Qu quarterback Mason now has his tight end, Chenoweth, in motion from left to right. Nice sets up in the wing to the right. Actually, the slot right. Back to pass. Draw play. Give to Kirby Dardar. Up the middle. He's hit hard. And twisted down by Mario Freeman at the 35-yard line. Just shy of the 35. Cedric Jones also helped out. So that ball will, will go from the 31 and a half to the 35. About a three-yard, three-and-a-half-yard pickup. And a second down play. A little more than six. Centers are using their outside linebacker to chase the man in motion. If he's going from right to left, it'll be DeQuasey, and the opposite is true from the other side. So the outside linebacker is the one who is shadowing the man in motion. Dardar has three carries for 16 yards. The ball at the 35. Need to go to about the 42 for the first down. Syracuse and they're in the field. No score first period. Kevin Mason on the uh, delay play. Pitches the ball back and back on the other great defensive play was Bush. Larry Bush nailed the pitch man. Kirby Dardar right at the line of scrimmage. Cedric Jones took the quarterback, and what a great tackle on the right side was made by Larry Bush, who is a heck of a player from Ada, Oklahoma. Bob, one of the things that should help the Sooner defense is the fact that, believe it or not, Syracuse runs exactly the same kind of offense the Sooners do. And Tom Hayes said, we practice against Syracuse every single day. And you don't see that very often with two offenses that are mirror images of each other. Aaron Tanner is in the lineup, along with Arthur Atkins in the Sooner lineup. In motion is Marvin Harrison from left to right, wide receiver. We have split backs, quarterback on a third down play. 
drops straight back. Kevin Mason, about a six, seven step drop, fires a pass upfield. Almost intercomplete, almost intercepted. It was intercepted. That's uh, that's a fumble. It ends up with a deflected ball at the 42 yard line and takes it all the way down to the 30. It was almost complete. It was almost intercepted. Then it was intercepted. Well, the Sooners put in their nickel package, which means that Davis comes in as a nickel back. And on that last play, both had the coverage. The ball was in and out, as Bob described, in and out of the arms of the receiver. Then it was intercepted and popped back up in the air before Fogel finally came down with it. And the Sooners have a first and 10 at the 30-yard line. And that was Fogel's first interception as a Sooner. And he was a 12-yard return. And the Sooners have first down and 10 yards to go from the Syracuse 30-yard line. Derek McGee at quarterback. Tailback is still James Allen. Actually, he's the only back behind Derek McGee. Derek pitches down. He goes to his left, comes back to his right. He spins at the 22. He stands inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. What a great run by James Allen. Tremendous run by James Allen, who was spinning, cutting back. And the tackle by Scott Feeney. That's the defensive outside linebacker, Scott Franey and Tony Jones, the free safety. Boy, what a run by James Allen. Bob, you're absolutely correct again in the ability of James Allen to cut on a dime. In other words, he can change directions almost in midair. Means that you really never get a good shot at him. That was a 12-yard run by Allen. They put the ball down the Syracuse 18-yard line. Third first down for the Sooners. Derek McGee has his team in the eye. Dwayne Chandler pullback. The gift to Allen. Starts to go left. Nothing there. He's tackled for a loss. Ran into his own man. Langston was blocked into him. The center Chuck Langston. James Allen was pushed back and lost a yard or two. Nate Hemsley, the linebacker from Del Rand, New Jersey. The inside linebacker also on the stop, and they'll move that ball back to the 20-yard line for a two-yard loss. Sooners have second and 12 from the Syracuse 20. No score. 8-0-4 to go first period. And so far, what Bots Watson Brown had predicted that they would not run a lot of option, that they would call the play in the huddle. That's the play they'd run, and they're using their backs with James Allen and the fullbacks being used almost exclusively. No option has been called yet. They've changed the uh, the ball positions down to 19, so a one-yard loss. Second and 11. I formation for the Sooners. Two wide receivers right, one to the left. Derek McGee pitches to Allen. Sweeping right. Cuts at the 15. Keep down to the 10. Or close to it. Makes the 11. Allen slow getting up. Rolls over on his back. Maybe slightly shaken up. Now he gets up. Boy, that, you hold your breath when that happens. And let's see where they officially mark the ball. It started at the 19-yard line. And they'll mark that ball at the 12. Is where they spot it back to so a 7-yard pickup. And a double tight end will check in. It'll be Jason Harmon. And uh, Stephen Alexander in for Oklahoma. The ball is at the 13s where they put it. So a six-yard pickup and brings up a third down play. Five yards to go for Oklahoma. Harmon is the best blocking tight end, and Alexander is the second best blocking tight end the Sooners have. Oklahoma has now Alexander tight end right. P.J. Mills split left. Eric McGee keeps the ball. McGee cuts in. He's at the 10. He's inside the 10 to about the 8-yard line. We have a flag. They have fumbled the ball, and Syracuse recovers. McGee was hit just as he got to the 10-yard line. The ball went free, and Syracuse ends up with it at about the 8 or 9-yard line. So the Sooners have wasted two opportunities. Nate Hemsley recovered the fumble for Syracuse, and the Orangemen take over at about the 10-yard line, Mike. That's yes, well. the Sooners have run two option plays in this series. Uh, they have hammered away at Syracuse with their tailbacks and fullback, and when they get this close, they felt that for that perhaps the Syracuse defense would be pinching in, and as a result, the Sooners went wide. And instead of going wide uh, with a pitch out, Garrett Captain would have had the first down, but he fumbled the football, and uh, Syracuse takes over. The Sooners, the only good news is that they get the ball at the nine-yard line rather than a little bit further out, and they'll have to be somewhat careful with the football. The Carrier Dome, well, it was opened in 1980, but here's something that many people didn't know. In 1979, with the old stadium obsolete and the Carrier Dome not opened yet, Syracuse played every single game on the road. They still posted a 7-4 and four record and a postseason berth in the Independence Bowl. How would you like to go through a season and never play a home game? <laughs> that would not be fun. Well, the ball is at the 10 is where they've officially put it after that double recovery by Syracuse by Hemsley. 6.49 to go in the first period. We have no score. The Sooners have picked up three first downs. Syracuse won. And we've had two turnovers as Fogel, Anthony Fogel, intercepted a Syracuse pass and returned it 12 yards to the Syracuse 30. And the Sooners had a great opportunity to score, picked up one first down, and then fumbled it away at the 10. 
John Deere and your local John Deere dealer where you'll find a complete line of outdoor power equipment for your farm and home. One of our proud sponsors of Sooner Football. We look around the stands here and it appears nearly every chair is filled. Yeah. 50,000 on hand for this battle. Opening game of the season for both schools. The game has been played mostly in Syracuse territory after the Sooners moved from their own 20 on the opening drive. Oklahoma had a real good drive going, but has failed to score. And those things might haunt you when you can't take advantage of opportunities to score early. That's correct, Bob. In any first game, you really don't know what's going to happen. We mentioned that Syracuse has a new defensive coordinator. And Watson Brown said absolutely for the first time in, in years as an offensive coordinator at various schools, he really didn't know what Syracuse would do. Uh, throughout the first portion of this ball game, he's had an opportunity to find out if the Sooners have run the ball well, but turned it over on that last play. In the backfield is Kevin Mason, quarterback. Now Edmund Robinson, 222 at fullback, and Malcolm Thomas, 191 at tailback. They're the eye from the 10. Syracuse sends Harrison motion from left to right. Long signal count. Kevin Mason still calling. Now gets it. Hands the ball to Thomas. Malcolm Thomas hit hard. Spins away. Gets up field and is down to go out the 15 or 16 yard line by Brent DeQuasey. Well, the centers are not wrapping him up. You got to give credit to the Syracuse runners. Malcolm Thomas was hit hard at about the line of scrimmage and just kept turning and gets from the 10 yard line up to the 17. That's a seven yard pickup on good seven effort. Second effort from Malcolm Thomas, a sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. He was a conference player of the year in high school, 25-7 and 191. Major, he was in the School of Arts and Sciences. The ball at the 17, second down and three. Kevin Mason has his team in the eye, wide receivers left and right. There is the gift to the tailback. Malcolm Thomas over the right side this time, gets a couple of yards from the 17 to the 19, and Syracuse will face their second third down of the game on a third and one from their own 19. No score, six minutes to go first period. Bob, to show you the inexperience of this Syracuse team, last year the Syracuse Orangemen set or tied 33 different records, and of those 33 new marks, only three were set by returning players, so it is an inexperienced team with most of all of the skilled players having graduated. Wide receivers are out of there. They're going with a real a compact lineup. Actually a wishbone formation now. Double tied in on a third and one from their own 19. Wishbone formation for Syracuse from their own 19. Quarterback leans over the center trying to get the first down. I believe he may have it at the 20 yard line. That was quarterback Kevin Mason. And he picks up first down number two for Syracuse. At, with 529 mark of the first period and no score. The ball will be at the 20 just to link the football across the Syracuse 20 yard line. Syracuse has not yet been in Oklahoma territory. Oklahoma has one interception. That was Fogle, but the Sooners have fumbled it. And that was the Derek uh, McGee who fumbled it to Syracuse. On that last short yardage situation, the Sooners had two nose guards in there, one of them being Barry Giles. At tailback is Malcolm Thomas, eye formation. Marvin Harrison, wide receiver from left to right. Quarterback Kevin Mason, first and 10 Syracuse from their own 20. Mason, a real short drop. Now goes to his right. Breaks up, wants to pass, now backs up. Nice being chased. Now he gets to the far side. That goes a long pass down to Hesselman and incomplete. And the crowd thought interference should have been called as it appeared Marvin Harrison had got behind the defensive man, Darius Johnson. There might have been a little shove around the 50, but uh, no whistle or no uh, flag. And so the play goes incomplete. Second down. That's a break for the Sooners. And Bob, it could have very well have been. And we'll go back to this old crutch that the official used, an uncatchable ball. I mean, that's crutch that officials use when the crowd starts to get on them. They simply say it was an uncatchable ball. Second down, 10 for Syracuse then from the own 20-yard line. 5 one to go first period and no score as Syracuse breaks the huddle. Jason Wilson goes wide to the right. Certain auto supply. AC's Copacore Electro dissipates heat and resists fouling better than conventional electrodes and deposits burn away for peak performance. So take a tip from AC Delco and stop in to the Curtin Auto Supply for AC Copper Core spark plugs. They're a surefire way to keep your car running longer. AC Delco, it's like buying time. See my Curtin Auto Supply, 1422 Southeast Washington, Ida Bell. Again, play again. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Oklahoma Sooner Network. This is 96 FM, 1240 AM, KBL. Out of Bell, it's Gray. Bob Berry along with Mike Treps and Mark Matthew. The situation after the 41-yard punt and three-yard return by Darius Johnson. The Sooners have their third possession. No score. 4 6 to go first period. The ball is at the Oklahoma 35. Sooner backfield now will be Garrett McGee. Dwayne Chandler fullback and Gerald 
Moore making his first appearance tailback. The sophomore, 19, 5, 10, 231 year letterman from Houston, Texas, went to Houston Yates. And he is a, a tremendously decorated player in high school, all greater Houston, player of the year in the area, uh, Houston area. And last year was impressive, Mike Treps. In university studies, he runs the 40 and 4.48, and boy, his legs are so big they bounce off of him. Well, I tell you what, a lot of people feel that in the future, Bob, when it comes time for these youngsters to go into the pros, that more would probably be a little more valuable, but we'll, uh, we're glad to have them both, and we'll just wait to see what the pros think right now. We're delighted to have them for three more years. Oklahoma now, in the eye from their own 35. Jared McGee fakes to Chandler. He's back to pass. He looks upfield. He throws a long, long pass down the middle, and it's incomplete. Intended at the, uh, for P.J. Hill at about the 20-yard line. That was the bomb. And Garrick McGee was hit just after he threw and sort of shake his head. Terrence Brown now comes in, a wide receiver for Oklahoma. On second and 10 from the Oklahoma 35. Really aired it out. Tony Jones, an experienced free safety from Tampa, Florida. A 200-pounder, 6'4 senior, was with P.J. Mills all the way on that play. Now coming out of the lineup is uh, Jason Harmon and... Michael McDaniel's in it tied in. He's a pass receiving type. Terrence Brown has got too much athletic ability to be wasted as a backup quarterback. You're going to see him play both quarterback and split receiver all year long. The tight end is to the far side, so we have two wide receivers left, one to the right. No actual tight end. An eye formation, second and ten for Oklahoma from their own 35. Derek McGee down the line of scrimmage. Option play pitches to Moore. Cuts up field, 35, 40, and then he's hit on a nice tackle at the 41-yard line. Boy, what a nice tackle by Nate Hemsley. He recovered that fumble a minute ago. Moore appeared to have room perhaps to go five more yards, but Hemsley just buckled him up at the 41. And Moore is not that easy to bring down. Nice run, though, of six yards by Moore. And the Sooners face a third down play. This is their third third down situation. Credit Garrick McGee because he had to wait till he was challenged. And as soon as he was, he flipped the ball out to Moore on what you would diagram as a perfect option play. Terrence Brown out of the lineup and wide receiver. P.J. Mills back in. Third down play. The Sooners are one for two on third down conversions. Wide receivers left. Derek McGee fakes the handoff, reverse to P.J. Mills, nowhere to go. Now, oh, a crushing block, but Mills has hit the backfield and down for a loss, and a flag is thrown at the point of the tackle. Boy, what a vicious block. Ooh, wow. He's raising up and smacking down one of the Syracuse players at about the 35. Ed Hobson really was hit in the chops, but it was a legal block. It was a block below the waist. The flag was dropped as the play ended. Let's read what the official says about it. That's holding. Oh, well, they're calling an illegal block. The illegal use of hands. Apparently, he moved his arms forward into the blocker instead of just being stationary. That's what I read it, Mike. Well, Bob, it, you know, it's a close call either way. It could have been called, and it could not have been called. Now, Syracuse has the option. They'll probably refuse the penalty because it brings up a fourth down, and the Sooners are not going to take a chance uh, in their own territory, so they'll send in the punting team. Syracuse Orange would refuse the penalty, so the ball will be put at the, uh, the play will be allowed to stand. A loss of two back to the 38. And Oklahoma will be forced to punt for the second time. Scott Blanton will be kicking. Kicked a 30-yard the first time. Line of scrimmage is the 38-yard line in Oklahoma territory. And fourth down play. And seven yards to go. Waiting for the deep snap. For Oklahoma, there's a snap right on the money to Scott Blanton. The rush is on. A kick is blocked, and a flag is thrown. It's blocked, but it gets downfield across the 40, takes an Oklahoma bounce, and goes will he roll dead inside the 35. A flag was thrown as the play began. The play, the punt was blocked, and yet the punt got downfield. You don't often see that. You just caught a little of it. The punt was blocked by uh, Bryce Neville, I believe. And let's read the flag. Uh, but right now, this is a big penalty, but it's against Syracuse. It's against Oklahoma, and it will be refused. So even though the punt was partially blocked, the Sooners got the good roll, and even though Syracuse will have their best field position of the evening so far, the it could have been a lot worse because that block of the Sooner punt could have given Syracuse the ball in Sooner territory, but the ball took a great roll for the Sooners. Procedure, Procedure against Oklahoma is refused, quite obviously. And Syracuse will have their best starting field position up around the 40-yard line, thereabouts, in their own end of the 35, field. 35, I believe. It's about the 30 end. Put it down at the 35. So in reality, the block uh, didn't cost the Sooners as much as it might have. The ball 
ends up at the 35 end, as Mike described to you, even though it was partially blocked, and Syracuse playing mighty tough. Oklahoma did not take advantage of early first quarter chances, and Syracuse is slowly gaining the momentum, and the crowd is into it, which is what Oklahoma did not want. 2.43 to go first period, no score. Oklahoma and Syracuse, season opener. Back to now of Kevin Mason, Edmund Robinson, and Kirby Dardar. It's actually the wishbone formation. Morris is the fullback and two halfbacks, of course, in the wishbone. Mason fakes the handle, back to pass. He's hit just, he throws it, and it's incomplete. Nice play by De Tremaine Green, who's in there. Tremaine, Mike Tremps, makes his presence felt on his first defensive play. He charged through and hit the quarterback, just as he threw the ball, and it was incomplete. Well, Tom Hayes, who believes in the blitz, called it on that play, and Tremaine Green came home free and forced Mason to throw the ball really before he wanted to because the receiver was to cut across the middle, and he had not made his cut when the ball was released. Two wide receivers to the left and one to the right now. No tight end for Syracuse on a second and ten from their own 35. Eye formation. Morris and Dardar in the eye behind quarterback Kevin Mason. Second and ten. No score first period. Handoff goes to Dardar over the right side and the center defense collapses on him before he reaches the 40. He gets the 39 for pickup of four and that'll bring up a third down in the yard to go. Arthur Atkins who's from Houston Lamar, the junior 6'4", 270, led in the tackling. Dardar, five carries for 20 yards total. No score, Oklahoma and Syracuse, 2.20 in the clock running to go in the first period, third down. Although the Sooners have a nose guard, and that's what he's called, according to most defensive coordinators around the country, and certainly the Sooners feel the same way, that the really you don't play a true nose guard very much anymore because of the double teams. You may see the Sooner nose guard lined up outside of the tackle in a four-man front or in a seven-man line. He won't always be over the ball. William Walker wide on the left side. Wide on the right, Marvin Harrison. In the slot to the right is Dardar. Morris, the only back behind the quarterback, Mason. Man in motion. Third down play. Mason, the deep drop this time. Looks downfield. Has plenty of time. Now runs with it. And he's smashed at the 35-yard line. Well, the center secondary had them all covered. Baron Tanner really hit Kevin Mason. And a loss on the play from the 39 back to about the 35 or 6. Wow, that, what a great play. So the quarterback uh, will give him credit for a sack. That's another big match sack attack by the Oklahoma Sooner Byron Tanner. And the Sooner Network is making a contribution this season to the Ron McDonald Children's Charity. That's called it at the 36-yard line. Loss of three on the sack. And uh, here is Sean Reale back to punt the ball for the first time for him. Darius Johnson is deep. Earlier, it was Olindo Mayer who punted. He punted the ball for 41 yards. This time, it is uh, Sean Reale. All right, we're set to go on a fourth down play. Less than a minute ago, first period. No score snap is a bit high. And here's Reale with a kick. A wobbly kick goes to the far side. Hits at the 30. Taken by Darius Johnson. 25 goes to his right back to his left. And tackled at the 28. Good coverage by Syracuse. After really a poor kick, got a nice bounce for Syracuse. A 41-yard uh, kick and a three-yard return. And the Sooners set up for their third possession of the game at about their own 28. And we have timeout on the field. Oh, there's no time now. We'll keep it here. <laughs> Bob, since the Sooners fumbled inside the 10-yard line in the successive in the successive uh, field position game, uh, the Syracuse Orangemen have gained each time. The Sooners have started a little bit deeper each time since that fumble. The Syracuse has played very good field position. Ball is up the 28, first and 10. McGee, Chandler, and Moore in the Oklahoma backfield. And off goes to... Up the middle, Chandler, 35, 40, 42 yard line. Dwayne Chandler from Aberdeen, Mississippi. Two year Ludman Jr., 6-0 and 226. A gaping hole over the left side. As the floor of the play went to the right, and Chandler, the fullback, picks up the Sooners' fourth first down of the evening, going from the 28 up to the 41 and a half, 42 yard line. Exactly. The Sooners must feel, after they've watched the Syracuse defense throughout this first quarter, that they are fairly quick in the uh, defensive line because they are misdirecting over and over and over this evening. 13-yard run as they'll put it at the 41, the length of the football upfield from it. Half minute to go, first period. High formation, Derek McGee gives this time to Gerald Moore, the left tackle, cracks up across the 45 to the 46-yard line. A gain of five from the 41 to the 46 of Oklahoma Territory. Tackled by Antoine Pons from Jacksonville, Florida. The redshirt freshman, 19-6-1 and 217, had 22 tackles in one game in high school, and he makes his second one uh, tonight. The ball at the Oklahoma 46. Five seconds. Now four seconds to go in the first period. No score as we right now end the first period. We'll be back in two minutes. This is the Oklahoma Sooners Network. Texaco presents the expert on everything that moves. Star Guide. 
I'm Star Guy and you're on the air. Yeah, Star Guy, I just picked up my new car. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for me? Yeah, first, put it down. <laughs> oh, boy. Just a little Star Guy joke. Yeah, very little. Okay, seriously. Start filling that new car up with Texaco System 3 gasoline. System 3 gasoline. Right. Okay, what grade? Any grade you choose. Oh. Because every grade of System 3 performs in cars both new and old. Great. So count on it for performance in your new car. Thanks. No problem. Next caller. Hey, are you really Star Guy? The one and only. How can I help you? Well, I'm really worried about my car. Oh. You see, it's getting up there in years. So you think it's past its prime? Way past. What should I do? Well, why not take it down to your local Texaco station and fill it up with some System 3 gasoline? What's so special about System 3? Well, you can count on System 3 for performance in older cars, too. How do you know so much about System 3? Hey, I'm Star Guy, and cars are my life. Well, till next time. Star Guy is brought to you by System 3 gasoline from Texaco, star of the American Road. Available at Harry Houston, Texaco, Old Company, Highway 70 Bypass, West and Annabelle. Our bank is your bank. It's a very simple statement, but the meaning behind it is profound. At McCurtain County National Bank, our bank is your bank. That means we understand that our only purpose is to fill your every banking need. Serving you is what our bank is all about. We want you to feel at home. At your bank, McCurtain County National Bank. Our bank is your bank, McCurtain County National Bank. Member FDIC. Eddie Allen, your friendly hometown pharmacist, after 20 years has moved to a new location. Eddie Allen is now open in Piggly Wiggly Broken Bow. He's taken all the vet supplies with him along with everything else. If you've been taking your prescriptions to Eddie Allen, now take them to Piggly Wiggly Supermarket in Broken Bow. Eddie Allen, your friendly hometown pharmacist, looks forward to serving you at Piggly Wiggly Supermarket Broken Bow. The phone number is 584-5841, 5842, or 5843. So Northern Iowa upset Iowa State 28 to 14. Colorado hammered Northeast Louisiana 48 to 13. Tonight, and keep in mind, there's an hour time between here and back in the Midwest. Tulsa playing at Missouri and Southwest Louisiana playing at Kansas State. Earlier this week, Kansas defeated Houston and Oklahoma State defeated Northern Illinois. The University of Nebraska has off and they'll play Thursday night in Lubbock against Texas Tech. Here, it's nothing, nothing at the end of the first quarter. The Sooners have had the best of it offensively and yet, as Bob has mentioned, a penalty which nullified a third and one situation for field and a fumble inside the 10 yard line have cost them two very uh, well very costly penalties have cost them uh, chances to put points on the board so as we start the second quarter Oklahoma will have a second down play from their own 46 yard line they have played most of this game in Syracuse territory but nevertheless the orange men have been able to stand off the centers and according to Mark Matthew a lot of the Sooner coaches are a little bit surprised that uh, Syracuse is a lot bigger than they perhaps thought they were. Sooners break the huddle. Yards rushing, Oklahoma has 73, four yards passing. Syracuse, 32 yards rushing, three yards passing. There's the pitch back. It goes to the tailback board. He cracks up across the 50. He's down into Syracuse territory to the 45-yard line. A gain of nine, and the tackle was made by Darrell Parker of the strong safety. 22 5 8 177. Gerald Moore, the sophomore, 5 10, 230. A great head of steam. Got nine yards. Sooners have their fourth first down. He's three carries for 20 yards. First and 10, the Syracuse 45. That's the classic pitch sweep out of the I formation. And many times you'll pull both guards to lead the play. The fullback also leads. So you have a pretty good wave of blocking through the hole. And Gerald Moore is taking advantage of that. PJ Mills to the left and Albert Hall to the right. Tight end. On the right side, Derek McGee, the option, keeps the ball. He'll get nowhere. He loses the yard back to the 46. Derek McGee carried the ball. They had everybody covered there. The pitch man, Gerald Moore, covered. And, Mike, you mentioned earlier that the Sooners practice against the Syracuse offense every day. Likewise, Syracuse practices against the Oklahoma offense every day. That's because correct. these two schools have the same offenses. And, boy, did Syracuse have the option play covered well that time. Second down 11 for Oklahoma as Albert Hall out of the lineup. Jawan Penny in the lineup. Brown also checks in at wide receiver. So Terrence Brown and Juwan Penny are the wide receivers. Brown goes to the right. Juwan Penny to the left. High formation. Moore at tailback from the Syracuse 46. No score early second period. Derek McGee drops straight back to pass. Guy comes up field. He looks downfield. He's tackled. And he loses the ball, but it was uh, after he was down. And he'll end up gaining a yard to the 45. Looks like that might have been a quarterback draw. And the tackle was made by Brazil. The left tackle. Wilkie Bazile, who is from Spring Valley, 22-6.
43 and 277. McGee could get only a yard out of that. It's third and 10 for Oklahoma, the Syracuse 25. If that indeed was the quarterback draw, you'd like to see your quarterback break the line of scrimmage straight up the middle because that's how you block it. You don't want him going to the outside until he gets into the secondary because you don't have anybody on the perimeter blocking there. Now the Sooners pull out their tight end. Well, there's a Michael McDaniel who splits wide and right. We have two wide receivers to either side. Shotgun formation. Screen pass. It's caught by Moore at the 48 in Oklahoma territory. 50, 45, 40, 35, hit the 30, at the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Gerald Moore on the screen pass. Goes 45 yards. And he runs all the way up to the locker room tunnel. Gerald Moore scores. Bob, what happened that time? Syracuse loaded the gun and brought two linebackers on the blitz. How do you counteract the blitz? You run the draw or you run the screen. The Sooners get perfectly. They ran the perfect play for a blitz. Syracuse brought seven men, the five down linemen, the two linebackers hoping to put pressure on McGee. It didn't work, and Oklahoma has scratched first. 72 yards in six plays, and the scoring play, a 45-yard screen pass to Gerald Moore. Here comes the extra point attempt by Scott Blanton, who was 41 to 41 a year ago. Waiting, the snap, ball down, kick in the air at the end zone to our left. It's good. Timeout. 12.56 to go before halftime. Oklahoma 7, Syracuse nothing. This is the Oklahoma Sooner Network. When you check out the new Dodge Ram pickup, bring your whole office. There's room for a laptop computer and a cellular phone in our new fold-down center console. And room behind the seats for a briefcase, toolbox, and more, thanks to another convenient option. An ingenious storage system with a divided tray, interchangeable bins, and cargo netting. All this office space and a great view, too. New Dodge Ram pickup. The rules have changed. The gas advantage. The train high efficiency natural gas furnace team with the high efficiency air conditioner means energy savings all year long. The train XL80 high efficiency natural gas furnace uses two stage gas heat to gently and quietly heat your home, keeping your comfort level just right. What's more, your train dealer can offer you a limited warranty that protects your XL80's patented heat exchanger for 20 years. The gas advantage. Pure savings. Pure efficiency. Pure Oklahoma. Call your local train dealer today. Designed, tested, and manufactured to last, it's hard to stop a train. Along with Mike Traps and Mark Matthew. And Mike, you were making the comment, Gerald Moore has a little bit of speed, doesn't he? Didn't he? He caught that screen pass. He runs the uh, 40 and 4.48, and he used it there. When you look at Gerald Moore, you really don't equate him with speed. You equate him with a big type of back. And I'm not talking about the size, I'm talking about the weight. Because he runs so low to the ground, he's not very tall. But when he broke into the open, he literally outran the Syracuse secondary. Again, Syracuse caught in the blitz, and uh, they just paid dearly for it because they didn't have enough people in the secondary. Once Oklahoma committed their blockers on the screen, they uh, broke, they broke uh, more free from at about the 25 or 30-yard line, and he just outran. So it's 7 to nothing. and even though the Sooners have squandered a couple of opportunities, Bob, you have to say they've controlled the game. Definitely. This game brought to you in part by Phillips 66, the performance company, and makers of high-quality, super-clean, unleaded gasoline for your car. That was a drive of 72 yards in six plays. There was a 13-yard run by Chandler to start the drive, a 9-yard run by Moore, and then the 45-yard screen pass to Gerald Moore, the extra point by Scott Blanton, and Oklahoma's on top 7-0. Now Syracuse will send back to receive the kickoff. Jim Turner, who's a wide receiver by trade, and uh, Kirby Dardar. And Scott Plant will kick off from right to left. Of course, we're in the dome, so no win factor. And uh, this will be the first Sooner kickoff. Since Syracuse kicked off to start the game, we've had no points until the Sooners just scored on that 45-yard screen pass to Gerald Moore. Here's the kickoff from Scott Blanton, booms it downfield and goes deep into the end zone. Kirby Dardar just lets it sail, hits it about nine yards deep in the end zone and out of the field of play. And Syracuse starts from their own 21st and 10. This will be their fourth possession. They started from their own 20, which is where they start from this time, their own 10 and their own 35. Bob, the kickoff by Blanton certainly has continued a trend. He started a year ago. Last year, he kicked off 77 times, and only 27 were returned, and that is a tremendous weapon when you know that your kickoffer is going to put them in the end zone. No win tonight, but he is now one for one with kickoffs into the end zone. Wide receivers are Jason Mason, 
Jason Wilson and Marvin Harrison. The tight end, Chenoweth, is in the slot to the right. I formation, Syracuse, first and 10 from their own 20. Fake draw by Kevin Mason, back to pass. Try to play action, throws the pass, and it's incomplete at about the 25-yard line. The thing that impresses me early, Byron Tanner was putting the rush on late there. The thing that impresses me about the center defense here in the last couple of times, well, oh, they've uh, defensive backs have had everybody covered. Absolutely. A little word about Baron Tanner. He came as a very highly recruited athlete, did not make his grades, but stayed in school and did everything he had to do to be eligible. And Tom Hayes says he will be a great star in the future. He has the desire, and what he did to get eligible certainly indicates that. Second and 10, Syracuse from their own 20-yard line. Sooners lead 7-0, 12-49 to go before halftime. No tight end, two wide receivers to the right and one to the left. Chenoweth, who's in the slot right, goes in motion to the left. Quarterback is Kevin Mason. Gets the exchange, breaks the handoff, again back to pass. He looks, good protection, lobs the pass, way over the zone. Boy, Mason hurt footsteps that time. That was intended for Roy Willis out of the backfield on the flat to the right side, and he put that ball over his head. Tremaine Green was uh, protecting on the play, and it's third and ten Syracuse from their own 20. Bob, I'll tell you what, that you can't throw a more dangerous pass. He just floated the ball out. It was high, as you mentioned, and that could have been six points. You don't like to throw that kind of pass in the, in the flat, particularly when you just lob it out there. Oklahoma now has uh, in the lineup Cedric Jones at defensive end on the right side on a third and ten from the Syracuse 20. It's the shotgun formation. Mason back to pass. He's being rushed through. Hit just he throws and nobody there. There was nobody in the Apparently being held up was Marvin Harris who was trying to cut across the middle but he got held up in traffic and so Syracuse with some booze coming down from the fans tries three plays, doesn't gain an inch, and it's third, fourth down 10 from their own 20. Kevin Mason limping off the field. At times, Tom Hayes says you're going to see the dime package, which we saw on that last play. We're always going to rush four, but we had seven defensive backs counting your linebacker core. Here comes a punt now from the kicker, Sean Reale, who punted uh, 41 yards the last time he kicked it. This will be from left to right again. We're in the dome, so the no, no wind. Sooners have uh, all but two men. Now they back off from the line of scrimmage as the punt goes in the air. Darius Johnson backs up as he waits for it, and he does not single fair catch. He gets it to 37, goes to his left. He's to the 40, he's the 45, 50, 45, 40, and down at the 35-yard line in Syracuse territory. What a tremendous run back. There will be a timeout on the field. Oklahoma leads 7-0, 12-25 to go before halftime. This is the Oklahoma Sooner Network. safe deposit box, you can rent peace of mind for only pennies a day. A safe deposit box is a great place to store your valuables. Rent some peace of mind. Rent a safe deposit box today. Ida Bell National Bank. Member FDIC. Since 1921. Today's certified public accountant is more than just a tax consultant. A CPA is a business advisor, keeping abreast on legislation which affects today's family, small businessman, farmer, and the professional. He's an invaluable, solid partner in helping you improve your business and financial standards. Laws frequently change and forms required to various agencies are sometimes overwhelming. So let Jack and Linda Bell, your competent, certified public accountants, handle your business affairs. along with Bob Berry and Mark Matthew. Darius Johnson with a truly outstanding punt return, but keep in mind that the defense coming down under the punt has to give you a cushion of two yards. Darius knows that they can't come that close to him at full speed because they would be in fraction of the rules. So he knows he's going to be able to make the catch, and he knows the defense is already pulling up. So the momentum in reality is Darius's. And once he split the two defenders coming at him, he was able to get to the wall, and that's exactly how you set up the butt return. Sooner football is brought to you by Train and your Train Heating and Air Conditioning dealer. It's hard to stop a train. Sooners have a new fullback in there, Terry Collier. First time he's been in. Had a great year a year ago. Uh, Two-year letterman, of course, the twin brother Perry, plays on the defense for Oklahoma. Terry Collier, Jr., 6-0-220. And the return, by the way, of Darius Johnson, Mike was talking about a 30-yard return after a 47-yard punt. Sooners, great field position, leading 7 nothing. Have the ball to Syracuse, 35. Bob has called an awful lot of names, but not in the offensive line. That's one area the Sooners probably will not substitute very much. 
Chuck Langston, the center, speaking of that offensive lineup over the ball. Garrick McGee has his team in the eye. Tailback is Gerald Moore from the Syracuse 35. First and 10. Garrick McGee down the line of scrimmage in the option. Pitches to Gerald Moore. Gets the pitch out. Cuts downfield. Gets about two or three. And then is wrapped up at about the 31-yard line by Dan Conley and Nate Hemsley. Conley, according to Trip Davis, our spotter for Syracuse, had just had his knee taped again. He's had nine knee operations. He has six years of eligibility. The NCAA grant is their spiritual leader, but he's a little bit hobbled, those knees, after nine operations, I can imagine. At the 31, a pickup of uh, four on the play. At the Syracuse, 31, Oklahoma leading 7 nothing. 11.51 to go before halftime. Mills wide right. Albert Hall wide left. Eye formation. Garrick McGee pitches to Moore going to his right. Cuts down field. 30. He's at the 25. He's down to the 22-yard line. And tackled by Bryce Bevel, the left cornerback, at about the 22-yard line. Milton Overton, offensive lineman from Fort Worth, Texas, Dunbar, slow getting up. Now he walks back as the ball is put up to 22 as Gerald Moore got nine on that carry. Back to Dan Conley, and obviously you have to have great respect for the courage this young man has shown after nine E operations, but he's playing a middle linebacker spot, and you've got to have quickness at the middle linebacker to roam one side to another, and you wonder after nine E operations whether he can get that quickness that they need. The Sooners are running at will. That's the sixth first down for Oklahoma, a new tailback. James Allen, and the ball goes into the middle. That was Terry Collier. Gets about four from the 22 in Syracuse territory to the 18. Tony Jones on the tackle. There was a tremendous pileup at the 18-yard line where the play ended. About a four-yard pickup. And that offensive line, Mike Treps, is moving out the Syracuse defense a little more, uh, perhaps, than they were a few minutes ago. Yeah, Bob, last year, Syracuse defense was very, very poor, and they lost their defensive coordinator because of that. They had to bring in a new defensive coordinator to try to get it right. Sooners thought because of that offensive line and the quickness in the backfield, they might start to wear this defense down, and apparently that's what's happening. Second down play. There's a pitch to James Allen going to his right. Cuts back and nowhere to go. He's tackled for a yard loss. Or now maybe at the line of scrimmage. That was a nice play by Syracuse on the defense. That was a Chris Marcus and also a Wilkie Bazil on the tackle. As Allen tried to go right and then tried to cut back, there wasn't anything there. Well, it's about a no-gain situation. Brings up third down. Six yards to go for Oklahoma. Have the ball downfield from the Syracuse 18. Need to go down to the 12 for the first down. Leading 7-0. 10-19 to go in the second period. Derek McGee steps into that huddle. Backfield of Terry Collier and James Allen behind him. Wide to the left comes Albert Hall and P.J. Mills. Tied in on the right side is Jason Harmon. Third down play. Crowd roaring. Derek McGee drops back. He throws a pass. It's a poor pass incomplete at the 11-yard line. Intended for P.J. Mills. Thrown behind him. Not a good pass, even though it was open, and Garrick McGee is disgusted with himself, and it brings up a fourth down play, and Scott Blanton will check in to try a field goal for Oklahoma with 10.02 to go before halftime. Boy, he had his man, Mike, but Garrick couldn't hit him there. That's right, and, and you have to realize that even though Garrick McGee has had a good fall practice, that there are still some things that he have to be on his mind. It'll get better as the season goes along, so you have to forgive him for a pass that was there, but a little bit behind the receiver. Amen on that. From the 25, it'll be a 35-yard field goal attempt. Go to our left, and we have timeout. Timeout is taken on the field by Oklahoma. 10.02 to go before halftime. Oklahoma 7 and Syracuse nothing. This is the Oklahoma Sooner Network. He's a redshirt freshman. He was a tight end and punter in high school in Midwest City. Second team preseason All-America his senior year in high school was All-State. And 19.63-226 in university studies. That's Tim Darty, who will be holding a very important job, of course, on a field goal attempt. Interesting point. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Here comes the field goal attempt from 35 yards. The deep snapper will be Taylor Wickersham. Taylor Wickersham from Broken Arrow, a walk-on this year. Going on to the field goal, or goal to our left. Way in the snap. The ball is down. Here's the kick. It's in the air. It's long enough, but it's no good. Off to the right. He just didn't hit it solid, and it went off to the right. So the Sooners squander another scoring opportunity. They had great field position on a first and 10 at the 22, and uh, couldn't make it. As Syracuse buckled up, good defense, got to give him credit. And then a 35-yard field goal went awry to the right, and Syracuse takes over throwing 21st and 10. Talking about what we consider to be an interesting point, Watson Brown says as far as timeouts are concerned, in the first half, he could care less. If they want to call a timeout on three consecutive plays, fine. Now, in the second half, the coaches will call the timeouts because they're much more critical. But in the first half, he says it's not that important. 
backfield now is Kevin Mason, Edmund Robinson, and Malcolm Thomas for Syracuse. First and 10 from their own 20. In motion is Marvin Harrison from left to right. Long single count. Mason fakes to the tailback. Actually gets the tailback. He gets about two yards, and then Tyrell Peters nails him. Mario Freeman helps out a gain of three. That was a nice fake by the quarterback. Faked me out for the moment, Kevin Mason. But he indeed handed off to Malcolm Thomas. Then he went back as if he was going to pass. And the run went for three yards. Oklahoma leads 7-0. 9.37 to go second period. Oklahoma on top of a fighting Syracuse Orangeman team that's playing Oklahoma to the hilt. Sooners have had three opportunities in deep in Syracuse territory and haven't scored on any of them. And then, of course, that long 45-yard screen pass. Now we have an official timeout as the umpire, or rather the referee, Steve Juszczyk, is talking to Malcolm Thomas. A equipment problem, I think it's helmet. Chim, uh, chin guard is uh, messed up. And let's see, what we, I think we got that all squared away. So we start play again, and Syracuse will have the ball at their own 23, second down seven. Oklahoma leading seven, nothing. Two wide receivers left and one to the right. Chenoweth. The tight end is in the slot left, and he comes in motion to the right. Kevin Mason, the quarterback, from the Syracuse 23. Fakes one handoff. He's hit in the backfield. Tyrell Peter, and he gets away and goes to the far side and is out of bounds. I don't know how in the world he got out of the grasp of Tyrell Peters. He had him back inside the 20, Mike Trips. Somehow, Mason came out of there, and uh, he, Malcolm Thomas is down. He was trying to block on the play. Thomas was. But the quarterback's out of bounds on the far side. He's going to end up at about the line of scrimmage, 23-yard line. Bob, what I think happened is the fact that uh, when the rush was made by Peters, he had to get over Thomas to get to Mason, and it looked like he had Mason, but Thomas was in the way and provided enough of a curtain to keep him away, and Mason was able to slither up to about the 23-yard line, about the line of scrimmage, maybe a half-yard gain down the play. So it'll be third down and about seven. Now, uh, Malcolm Thomas is up and trotting off the field under his own power. He's okay. And in at tailback is Kirby Dardar from Thomas Jefferson High School in Tampa, Florida. Ball is up to 23 and a half, as Mike Trapp said. It's third down for Syracuse. They must go to the 30, so a little less than seven, as Kevin Mason gets the signal from the sideline. He has the plays on, a, on his wrist, on a uh, list on his wrist, a cheat sheet on his wrist. Syracuse is two for four in third down conversions. Nine minutes to go before halftime, 9.02 precisely, and Oklahoma leads 7-0. We have a slot to the right side. That's Kirby Dardor. Wide in motion left to right is Marvin Harrison. Back to pass goes Kevin Mason. The rush is on. The pass is thrown. It's tipped in the air and incomplete. Almost picked off by Fogel, who intercepted one earlier. That was the line drive pass from Kevin Mason, who has not passed well. He's only one of seven for three yards. And that one was a bullet. It went off the hands of the intended receiver, Marvin Harrison. And Fogel was mad at himself for not intercepting that one. One of the new terminologies in football is a rush end or a rush backer as far as the Sooners are concerned. And the rush backer will always force. He will never drop off. Now, Rosenberg and Lucky will flip-flop, but most of the time that rush end will line up away from the tight end. So you'll always have a four-man rush. And one of those four will always be one of the outside backers or the rush backer in the terminology the Sooners use. Back deep to kick is Sean Reale on a fourth down play in seven from the Syracuse 23. Sooners leading seven up. Second period. Snap it's back. Kick in the air. A good kick by Reale. Darius Johnson waits for it. Takes it to the 31-yard line. He's to the 35. Back to his left at the 40. Up to the 45-yard line and tackle just across the 45 to the 46. So a gain of about 15 yards on the return. Eric Chenoweth. The tight end on offense made the tackle there. 48-yard kick and a 15-yard return for Darius Johnson, who's done a great job returning. And Oklahoma has their fifth possession. Actually, their sixth. Their sixth possession and leading 7-0. This time they start from their own 46-yard line with 8.46 to go in the second period. Oklahoma on top by the score of 7-0 on the 45-yard screen pass by Gerald Moore, which came early in the second period. Ball is at the 46 in Sooner territory. First down, 10 yards to go. Derek McGee, who's gone all the way at quarterback, has his team in the eye. Derek fakes the handoff. He rolls out to his left. He throws a pass downfield for P.J. Mills. Caught the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Oklahoma. On a perfect pass from Derek McGee to P.J. Mills. He caught it at the 30-yard line. And Bob, I think that makes up for the poor pass he threw just a moment ago when he misfired on a third down play. That time, as you called it, you will never see a better pass thrown 
known uh, by anybody. I don't care whether it's uh, Garrick McGee or John Elway. You will never see a better pass thrown. He led the receiver perfectly, and the Sooners now lead it by 13 with a try for points still to come. At the end zone to our left. Boy, that is that was just a perfect pass from Garrick McGee. P.J. Mills on the run, caught it at 30, and then he turned on the speed and scored. Here is the extra point attempt by Blanton. Darty, the holder, snap, ball down, kick in the air on the extra point, and it's good. Timeout, 8.38 to go. Blanton's kickoff. Kirby Dardar takes it eight yards deep. The end zone, he'll run it out. He's at the five. He's at the ten. He's tripped up at the 15 and tackled at the 17 or 18. Boy, that was a, a, an unusual play. 25-yard return from Kirby Dardar, a senior, three-year letterman, and he uh, ends up gaining three less yards than he would, but he's a good speedster. Perhaps he thought he could break something, make something happen. That's exactly right. Bob, when you do that, you take the ball in the end zone and you wait. You don't come back right away. The secret in kick returning on kickoffs, not necessarily punts, on kickoffs, you want a speedy receiver who can cover as much ground as possible before he gets to the defenders. If you try to run a ball out of the end zone, you have to run, say, five yards even before you get to the field of play. So it was a mistake. Well, Malin Wesley now in free safety in place of Fogel for Oklahoma defense. Morris the fullback, Malcolm Thomas the tailback. Back to passes. Mason being rushed, fires, pass caught at the 25 and tackled at the 28. Darius Johnson makes the tackle and Peters helped out, but that is only the second completion out of eight passes for Kevin Mason, and it was Jason Wilson who caught the pass at the 28th, gain of 11. And for Syracuse, that's their first first down since the first period, their third first down in the game. They have a thrown 28-yard line. Oklahoma leading by a score of 14 to nothing. Now they have the lineup in the wishbone formation. Morrison fullback. Harris in the left half. Thomas the right half. Here's the handoff to fullback. He's up the middle and gets to the 31-yard line to pick up a three. Mario Freeman on the tackle. Uh, the fullback, Terry Morris. Colin Rosenberg helped out. He's the outside linebacker about whom Mike spoke a moment ago, the sophomore 6'4", 235. So Syracuse picks up 11 yards on a pass, and the crowd in, in mock cheer cheered after that completion. The passing game hasn't gone well for Syracuse. With Simpson hurt, Broderick, uh, the outside backer on the right side, Rosenberg, getting his first career start. Second down seven for Syracuse. I formation this time. To give to the fullback, the fake, the fullback pitches to Thomas. He's knocked out of bounds on the far side. Hit very, very hard. And let's see where the play ends up. The ball was actually knocked loose from him and went out of bounds way up at the 39. That's the most unusual play. He was hit on the far side at about the 34 or 35. Knocked forward. Knocked, the ball was knocked out of his hands and went out of bounds. And, of course, they get the yardage where the ball ended up. But now, wait a minute. They're moving it back to the 37. So a pickup of six. Looked as though he had a first down on the fumble. It'll be a third down play and a yard to go at the Syracuse 37. Bob, I'm not quite sure of this, but I believe to get yardage on a fumble, it has to bounce first inbounds. And they may have ruled that a first bounce was out of bounds. And Syracuse has mass confusion as they send in two substitutes very late, and they're forced to call a timeout. 7.33 to go before halftime. Timeout, Oklahoma 14, Syracuse nothing. This is the Oklahoma Sooner Network. Daddy Oklahoma and Oprah after the first round then collapsed. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I'm just teasing, Trip. He is a great golfer and a fine person. Golf architect if you need to build a golf course. Dustin Strait spotting for us for Oklahoma. And Brent Skarkey keeping our stats. Wishbone formation, third and a yard from the 37-yard line. In Syracuse territory, quarterback Kevin Mason. Double tied in. Long snap, fake to one man, give to Dardo, cracks up for the first down easily, gets all the way up to the 44-yard line, needed a yard and got seven. Darius Johnson on the tackle. That was the fake one way in the hand of the other, and the game to the 44 with the fourth first down for Syracuse in the game, the second in this drive, and it's at the Syracuse 44-yard line. And continuing the, what they started a couple of years ago, Tom Hayes, the defensive coordinator, is on the field. He calls all of the defensive plays from the field itself, not from the press box. Jason Wilson wide right, Marvin Harrison wide left, his wide receivers tied in Chenoweth on the left side. Give to the fullback, or the fake the fullback. Pitch back goes to Malcolm Thomas. He's hit, the ball is fumbled, and the Sooners have it. Oklahoma recovers. Oh, what a great tackle. They nailed the pitch man, Malcolm Thomas. And Tyrell Peters recovers after a great hit defensively. Bob, those who are watching this ball game back home can see the same thing we see. Speed, speed, and more speed. The Sooners 
are the quickest defense that Gary Gibbs has had. Tom Hayes will tell you that. And they also run so well on offense. And speed makes up for so much. They close the gap so quickly. They close the holes. And on a pursuit like that, they have people just about the time the ball gets pitched. So right now, the Sooners with a big speed uh, option and a big speed uh, indicator as far as their owning the game. James Allen, a tailback. He was in the last series as well. He's the only back behind quarterback, uh, Derek McGee. Pitch to Allen, sweeping right side. Knight cuts over right tackle. He's uh, in heavy traffic at the 41 and tackle after a six-yard pickup. That was Wilkie Bazell on the tackle along with Nate Hemsley. But a nice run and good blocking by Milton Overton, J.R. Conrad, and Chuck Langston. As the game went from the 47 in uh, Syracuse into the field of the 41. They're very slow in piling there. Tremendous pileup, but it is at the 41 as we call it, and that brings up a second down play and about four yards to go for the first down. And again, the misdirection uh, that the Sooners have used so well this evening, just as Bob mentioned, a thing they used against uh, Texas A&M uh, well, a year ago, and of course the Aggies are spotting this game and looking at Oklahoma, and they see what, what hurt them so bad a year ago. Dan Conley, that linebacker, has had nine knee operations out for the second series in a row. That line, so he's not in there at the present time. From the 41 in Syracuse territory, second down, a little more than four to go. Gary McGee pitches to Allen, the right side. He's at the 40, down the sideline. That's the first down, crossing the 35 to the 33-yard line. Nice blocking on the outside and great speed by James Allen, the Winniewood Flash. Lightning picks up the first down from the 41 down to the 33, and eight-yard pickup, seventh first down for Oklahoma. And again, when you have fullbacks that block like the Sooners do, and you can pull one of those gigantic guards the Sooners have and sometimes pull them both, well, that's a convoy that anybody would like to run against or run for behind. And James Allen gives the Sooners another first down inside the 35-yard line. Allen has 11 carries, 61 yards. Sooners break the huddle. Juwan Penny wide to the right, split left is Terrence Brown. Have a man on the wing to the right. Only one back, Allen behind the quarterback, Eric McGee, from the 33-yard line. Eric McGee down the line of scrimmage. Keeps. Ooh, he's hit as he cuts to 32. Chris Marcus marks on the tackle after pickup of the yard. Derek McGee has run the option two or three times. He's carried twice, and boy, he's gotten busted both times as uh, he tries to keep the ball. He's, the Sooners have not run the option well, but Mike Treps explained that in our pregame show. Yes. The thing the Sooners might do a lot more than they did a year ago, for obvious reasons, is run the option pass where McGee will roll out and have the option of either running or throwing. Last year, of course, Cale Gundy could throw quite well, but he wasn't really the threat to keep the ball on an option run. So with Garrick McGee, they haven't run it yet, but you might look for that as this game continues. Again, wide receivers, two to the right, one to the left. On a second down play, about nine from inside the 32 in Syracuse territory, 5.07 to go before halftime, 14-0 Oklahoma. McGee fakes the right, folds back to his left, has a man open, fires a pass, caught Javon Penny down immediately at the nine-yard line. I tell you, McGee rolled out to the left on a bootleg, the ball of the play went right, and Juwan Penny had to stop and come back for the ball and leave his feet to catch it, but it was wide open, and McGee zeroed that ball in, and the game goes from the 32 down to the nine-yard line, first and goal centers. And Garrick threw a dart. I'm telling you, that was a great throw. He rolled out left and had to throw back to his right, and we talked about the option. If he had wanted to, he could have run because there was no one here on the left side, but when he saw Penny open, he rifled one down, and that's the Garrick McGee that we've heard about. That's a 23-yard pass to Juwan Penny. I formation, first and goal. James Allen, the tailback from the nine-yard line. Gary McGee gives Allen down the middle to the six, to the five, to the three-yard line almost. Dan Conley back in there, that linebacker, and Chris Marks on the tackle. And let's see if they'll move it back upfield, perhaps a yard right around the three-yard line. So a six-yard pickup for James Allen. 4.22 to go before halftime. Oklahoma leading 14-0. Trying to add to that, 4.18 to go before halftime as Andre Smith checks in the lineup at tackle, or actually at, uh, and as an extra lineman on the goal line defense for Syracuse. Terry Conyer, who had been on that play, is, leaves the lineup, and Dwayne Chandler's in. Oklahoma may go to the full house tee from the three. Watson Brown installed that full house tee a year ago, and that's what we have here. Full house tee, Moore at left half, Allen right half, and Chandler at fullback. Gary McGee keeps the ball, to the two, to the one, touchdown Oklahoma! Garrick McGee scores his first Oklahoma touchdown. And the full house tee got it for him. As everybody was looking for one of the running backs, and he kept over the right tackle. Great hole opened up by Overton and Conrad. And this time they ran the option to the tight end side, the short side of the field, because with that tight end, they get the little extra block. And as Garrick McGee slid down the line of scrimmage, a block was thrown on 
on the defensive end, which allowed McGee to cup up field. There was he could have pitched and the pitch man would have run in. That would have been more, but there's no need to do it. And Garrett McGee makes it 20 to nothing with the try for point still to come. And the Sooners, as Bob mentioned in the pregame, and as we talked uh, since that time, have taken the noise factor out of this game. The ability of the Sooner athletic performance and the speed factor have killed Syracuse. We have Hemsley, Nate Hemsley, fine linebacker from Delran, New Jersey. He was born in Willingboro, New Jersey. He has an ankle injury. He was all region high school management major. His left ankle, very tender. He led the team in tackles a year ago. Brent Skarkey, our statistician, informs me. Oklahoma will try the extra point now, leading by a score of 20 to nothing, 349 to go. As Scott Blanton was 41 to 41 on PATs a year ago, and tonight he's two for two, although he missed a field goal of 35 yards. Oklahoma on top as they have scored in three of their last four possessions. This going on in the end zone to our left. Waiting to snap, Darty's hold, Blanton kicks, looks good, is good. Timeout on the field, Oklahoma 21, Syracuse nothing. 3.49 to go before halftime. This is the Oklahoma Sooner Network. You can be sure that your money is safe and secure. Your deposits are insured up to $100,000 by the FDIC. In addition, we add the stability of a banking organization that's committed to sound banking practices. We look for investments right here in the community. We hope you'll do your banking with McCurtain County National Bank, where strength and stability are our banking guidelines. Member FDIC. Hey, Texas, the uh, twin brother of Terry Collier on the stop on the special teams, and Syracuse has their seventh possession. Derek McGee in his debut of Mike Trips. Six passes for 125 yards, two touchdowns, passing and one running. That's pretty good. We're still in the first half. And uh, there's only one or two that he did not throw well. Everything else has been right on the money. And then linebacker is Tremaine Green in place of Mario Freeman. High formation for Syracuse from their own 21. Kevin Mason, draw play fake. Back to pass, being chased out of the pocket. Goes to his right, being chased by Tyrell Peters, who grabs him, and Mason's out of bounds, and he'll get maybe back to line of scrimmage right at the 21-yard line. That was a lot of excitement and nothing gained. Second and 10 at the 21. You mentioned it, Bob, and let me mention it again. The Sooner defensive secondary, whether they're playing the standard four-man back, back or the five or the nickel or dime, have really stuffed the receivers that... Uh, Mason just hasn't had anybody to throw to, and he's had to scramble on a number of occasions because there was no one open. Fogel, by the way, is back in at free safety. Wesley played the last series at that position. High formation, wide receivers Wilson to the right. Wide to the left is Harrison. Chenoweth, the tight end on the left, second and 10 from the 21-yard line in Syracuse territory. 3.35 to go before halftime. Harrison in motion. Back to pass Mason. Fakes the handoff. Looks downfield. Throws a long, long pass. Downfield, incomplete. Just out of the reach of Marvin Harrison, and he had his man, John Anderson, beaten. Had he caught the ball, it would have been six. Marvin Harrison, let's tell you a little bit about him. He was streaking downfield. He's a retailing major. Returning starter was second team All Big Eight last year. 22 6 or All Big East, we should say, last year. 22 6 174 junior from Philadelphia, PA, went to Roman Catholic. He was a super prep All American in high school. Led the team with seven touchdowns a year ago. Third down 10, however, as the incomplete pass brings up third and 10 from the Syracuse 21. Bob, the Sooners play a zone defense, and that's the kind of defense they were in with Anderson, the safety man, and there was just a little bit of confusion as to coverage. Wide receivers now, Harrison wide right, and Wilson wide left. Chenoweth is in the slot left. One running back behind Mason, back to pass on third and 10. Steps up in the pocket, throws a bullet, and it's deflected by Fogel, intercepted. Picked off at the Oklahoma 35, and that's Bush down across the 40 in Syracuse territory. And a flag is dropped as it comes to rest inside the Syracuse 30 as Cy Ellsworth. And Bush may be injured after the pass interception. Larry Bush from Ada picked off the deflected pass. Well, we've had a lot of deflected passes tonight. Again, Mason is just has not got time to uh, free a, a receiver. They don't have a lot of speed in their receiving core, whereas the Sooners run like uh, the wind in their defensive secondary. And Mason just hasn't had anybody open, and when he did have Harrison open just a moment ago, he overthrew them. Let's read the penalty. It is a block in the back. It's against the Sooners, and that will cost them, but they will retain possession of the football inside the Syracuse, well, probably inside the 45, depending on where the spot of the foul will be. Nevertheless, the Sooners now with their third turnover of the uh, reception, two interceptions and one fumble recovery. 
So the interception by Bush, but the penalty on Oklahoma and the ball back at the 39-yard line in Syracuse territory. First down, Oklahoma, the Syracuse 39. The official explaining to the crowd here over the PA what happened. That was a block in the back, I understand. And so Oklahoma, first and 10 at the Syracuse 39 with 3.18 to go before halftime. And Oklahoma take contingent on the far side. Go Big Red, the cheer. Bush, uh, we'll get a report from Mark Matthew on Bush after this play. Two wide receivers to the left. P.J. Mills, who caught that pass a moment ago for the touchdown. 54 yards uh, to P.J. Mills. That was the touchdown before the last one. High formation. As Derek McGee goes back, he looks to pass. He throws down the middle. Overthrown. Intended down the middle for McDaniel, the tight end. Michael McDaniel had the pass been thrown a little bit lower. It might have been complete. Let's go to Mark Matthew on the sideline. All right, Bob, that play to uh, Larry Bush, the interception, he was tackled right in front of me. And what it appeared like, there may have been a late hitter he got stepped on. Has a little stinger on his right shoulder. No problem, probably back in the ball game, and uh, nothing serious at all. So good news. That is good news indeed. Second down, 10 Oklahoma at the Syracuse 39. Sooners leading 21-0, 3-14 to go before halftime. Three wide receivers to the left. Gerald Moore, P.J. Mills. And uh, Albert Hall, screen pass, complete to P.J. Mills, 42, 40, back to the middle, at the 35, flag is down, at the 30-yard line, to the 25, to the 20, Stutter steps his way and he's tackled, we have another flag down, we had two flags down, and uh, I don't know, late hit I think on the far side as well. Uh, with all the flags on the field, we may have penalties canceling each other, I think the Sooners are going to be called for holding, I also think they may have an illegal receiver downfield, or maybe an illegal procedure in Mills got started too quick. All right, there's a block in the back. That's the second time that penalty's been called in the last three plays. So regardless of what the other flags are, that's the penalty that Syracuse will accept and the Sooners will face second and long. The line of scrimmage was the 39. It was a great uh, run by P.J. Mills, who caught the ball on the near sideline, cut back toward the middle. Repeat second down. We were waiting for the official to finish his explanation. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. And the spot of the foul was uh, the 41-yard line in Syracuse territory. So that'll move it all the way back to the Oklahoma 49-yard line. So the Sooners must go from their own 49 down to the 29 in Syracuse territory. From the 49 to the 29. 49 in Oklahoma territory. That's 22 yards on a second down play. Oklahoma leading with 3.02 to go before halftime, 21-0. Oklahoma now has P.J. Mills and Terrence Brown. Wide to the right, wide left is McDaniel, and uh, now we have a timeout. Oklahoma had four wide receivers. We'll keep it right here. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Oklahoma Sooner Network. This is 96 FM at 12.40 AM, KBL out of L. It's 8.02. Bob Barry along with Mike Traps and Mark Matthews. Say, for all your checking, savings, and loan needs, call MidFirst today, where you always get more than you'd expect from a bank. MidFirst. Deposits, FDIC insured, and equal housing lender. Mike, your analyzation of the game thus far. Bob, under Gary Gibbs, the centers have been averaging almost 44 points a game at season's openers. Well, when this game began, we thought that's out the window, and yet the centers are halfway there, and the half is still three minutes and two seconds away. That last penalty moved the Sooners back, but again, if you're listening to our broadcast or if you're watching it, you realize the Sooners have just far too much speed almost everywhere that the big play has been the Sooners' weapon all night long simply because of the speed factor. So even though they're backed up second and 20, it doesn't mean that they don't have an ability to make up those 20 yards in a hurry. Syracuse on defense has Milwaukee Brazil along with David Rebar, Andre Smith, and Chris Marks. Chris Marks, the outside linebacker on the right side, his uh, dad formerly played in the NFL. From the 49 in Oklahoma Territory, second and 22, shotgun formation. Garrett McGee back. And draw play, hands off to Moore, up the middle, across the 50, down to the 47 in Syracuse Territory. The guy we were talking about, Chris Marks, makes the tackle. He played both tight end and linebacker a year ago. Chris Marks, in other words, played both ways. Uh, both ways. He's a fine athlete. He's a junior, 6'2", 233, makes the stop. And the game from the 49 in Oklahoma Territory, four yards downfield, across the 50 to the 47 in Syracuse Territory. So 18 yards to go on 
on a third down play as the Sooners probably will just simply run out the clock here as much as best they can. 2.25 to go before halftime. With that having said, they'll probably go deep. Two wide receivers left. Terrence, well, actually three wide receivers left. Back to pass is Derek McGee. Short pass caught by Moore at the 50. He's at the 45, spins at the 40, and down to the 38-yard line. Nice gain from the 47 in Syracuse territory down to the 38. Nine yards picked up, and it'll bring up a fourth down play at about nine yards to go. Watson Brown has said that the Sooners have three different screens in their offensive package, left, right, and up the middle. At that time, they came right up the middle. They noticed that Syracuse was putting a hard rush on the outside to negate anything coming that way. They've been burned on the outside a couple, three times. So a good call by Watson Brown, the middle screen. Sooners with a minute 42 are going for it on fourth down because their defense has played so well. Fourth down and nine yards to go from the Syracuse 38. Sooners leading 21-0. They go for it, as Mike indicated. Back to pass. Derek McGee, a deep drop. He looks. He throws. It's caught for the first down. Michael McDaniel, 25 at the 20 and out of bounds. Inside the 20, the play will end at about the 16-yard line. That's Michael McDaniel, who is from Oklahoma City. John Marshall was all state, great All-American, 6'2", 215. And the game from the 38 all the way down to the 16. And Mike McDaniel is by far the best pass-catching tight end. They use four tight ends. We've talked about that with Harmon being the best blocker, but uh, McDaniel according to Watson Brown is by far the best receiver, so they went to their best receiver. Now we're talking about as a tight end McDaniel who came as a split receiver of course sat out all last year because of injury, but is making his presence known early then this season. 22 yard gain night. pardon me, my 22 yard gain two wide receivers to the right, Oklahoma from the 16, Derek McGee again passing far side, it's caught by P.J. Mills at the 10, he's wrapped up in a hurry he was hit uh, by initially by Bryce Bevel and then wrapped up by Daryl Parker. That's the left corner and the strong safety. His forward progress will be to the 10, as we called it, a six-yard pickup, and it brings up second down, four for the first down, 10 for a possible touchdown with a minute right now exactly to go in the first half. And the Sooners only have one timeout left, Bob, so they're hurrying. And no huddle offense. I formation, more at tailback. P.J. Mills and Hall to the left. Back to pass, Garrick McGee. Great protection, throws a pass in and out of the hands right to the receiver, Dwayne Chandler. He's upset with himself can't catch them all. That was right to him, and oh, he's upset. Aberdeen, Mississippi youngster had it at about the uh, six-yard line. Stopped the clock with 47 seconds to go. Third and four at the 10-yard line in Syracuse territory. And boy, that shows the divergence of this Sooner offense because they've been throwing to their tight ends, to their backs, to their split receivers. That's the first pass that's been thrown to the fullback. So everybody is in the passing package, and they slipped him out after he made a block. He slipped out of the flat. He was all by himself. If he had caught the ball, he probably would have scored, but as Bob mentioned, he just forgot to do that. Nate Hemsley, fine linebacker who limped off the field, has a five bruise. He's out of there. From the 10-yard line, I formation, third down. Derek McGee drops straight back to pass. He pump fakes and tries to run with it and will be sacked. He was sacked. Brought down by Wilson, Gazelle, and Dave Rebar. Derek McGee, the discretion of the better part of Valor. Of course, when you're down that deep, the field shortens as far as the defensive secondary. And they're uh, with 27 seconds of the clock running. Fourth down play. Here's a 30-yard field goal attempt with no angle for Scott Blanton to miss a 35-yarder early. Snap, ball is down, Darty holding. Blanton booms it up and it's good. He had a 30-yarder. So the Sooners go on top, 24-0. We'll keep it right here with 14 seconds to go before halftime. Bob Scott Blanton has now kicked at least one field goal in 18 of the last 23 games. So he makes it a 24-0 halftime lead. We would suggest halftime, but only 14 seconds left. And the Sooners will kick off and the way Blanton has been kicking, he may not want to kick deep because Syracuse has been running them out of the end zone, trying to make something happen, as Bob explained. So the Sooners may just try to squib kick to the short man and run this clock out. 24 to nothing. A very, very impressive first half for the Sooners. And Bob, keep in mind, a couple of scoring opportunities were squandered earlier. It could have been a lot higher. Exactly. We were worrying about that from the Sooner standpoint. Did not take advantage of the scoring opportunities. And either a lot of people are going out for hot dogs. I don't know why I think of hot dogs, but they do. Uh, or <laughs> it's just so close to halftime. But we have an exodus of several fans as the Sooners line up to kick off with 14 seconds to go before the end of the first half. And Oklahoma on top, 24 to nothing. Jim Turner and Kirby Dardar, the two wide, or deep men rather, for the kickoff. Let's see what how Blanton plays it. He does boom it down. He really got into this one. Wow. Kicks it deep into the end zone. And it's fumbled by Turner. He, he's still looking for the handle. Finally picks it up. 
and the ball is down. So Syracuse starts from their own 20. This is their eighth possession, and uh, they have yet to score. Oklahoma's had the ball eight times. Eight times has uh, three scores and one field goal. Three. Ball brought out to the 20-yard line. Check the backfield with only 14 ticks of the clock before the end of the first half. Anthony Fogle, who made an interception earlier. Darius Johnson. Larry Bush, who was shaken up, but he's back in there right corner. We're talking about the defensive secondary. And John Anderson. Linebackers. Uh, Sooners now have Brent DeQuasi, who's played all the way. Tyrell Peters. Jermaine Green. From the 20. High formation. Man in motion. Marvin Harrison from wide left. Across the formation. Behind the quarterback. The gift to Dardar. Gets to the 21. Jermaine Green makes the tackle after a pickup of a yard. Syracuse just running out the time, and we have three seconds, two seconds, one second, and there's the end of the first half. Oklahoma leads Syracuse 24 0 at the half here in the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. At the half, our score then, repeating, is Oklahoma 24, Syracuse nothing. Our Bud Bry halftime show is coming up. This is the Oklahoma Center Network. When you find Texas Tech on the 17th is a giant Bud Wilkinson celebration, which will take part at the Lloyd Noble Center at 10 o'clock Saturday morning. You'll hear speakers such as Billy Vessels, Jim Owens, Clendon Thomas, Steve Owens, Chris Schenkel, and there's a video, a 15-minute video, featuring Coach Wilkinson that has never before seen by the public as he comments on his career at the University of Oklahoma. So it is admission-free, everybody invited. It begins at 10 o'clock at the Lloyd Noble Center on Saturday morning. That's September 17th. We hope to see you there. Let's go down very quickly to Mark Matthew. Tell you what, Mike, that locker room was really energized. Everybody was really up. Coach is very pleased, and I think this crowd is very stunned. You know, some of the fans were leaving at halftime, and this place was supposed to be a very noisy arena. Notice how quiet it got at the end of the first half? Let's hope it continues that way. Mark, the option is with Syracuse, they want the football, and we want Bob Berry. Well, you got him. <laughs> and uh, Syracuse will be defending the goal to our left, and Oklahoma kicking from right to left here in the Carrier Dome, where, again, the direction really makes a little difference because of no wind. Here's the kickoff. Scott Wenton booms it down. Kirby Dardar waits for it. About eight yards deep in the end zone. He will not run it out. And Syracuse will start first and ten from their own 20. Oklahoma leading 24-0. In the first half, Syracuse had the ball eight times, did not score. Oklahoma had it eight times, scored three touchdowns and one field goal. So half the time Oklahoma had the football, they scored. Bob, we've mentioned on a couple of occasions in that first half the ability of Scott Blanton to have his kickoffs non-returnable. Now, every kickoff that he has made, five of them so far, have gone into the end zone. A couple of them were returned, but never have they gone past the 20-yard line, so he continues that trend. The I formation, Kevin Mason, Terry Morris, and Kirby Dardar. In the I, two wide receivers to the right, Chenoweth. The tight end is in the slot right, Harrison left, and Wilson right. So no tight end, actually. Four-man defensive front, three linebackers for Oklahoma. Give to Dardar, bumps into his own man, then hanging on for dear life is Cedric Jones. And Brett DeCrazy actually had him around the ankle. A gain of maybe a yard for Kirby Dardar. He was the leading uh, runner in the first half, as Mike said, seven attempts for 27 yards. Well, they give him two to the 22. Second down eight for Syracuse. Sooners leading by the score of 24-0, just underway in the second half. And now here's Malcolm Thomas checking the lineup for Syracuse, replacing Kirby Dardar. Thomas is from Jacksonville, Florida. Malcolm Thomas, 5'7", 191, replaces Dardar, who is 5'9", 183. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Again, no tight end. Chenoweth in the slot right goes in motion to the left. Morris is the fullback, second and eight from the 22. Fake handoff, back to pass. The option play, the pitch to Thomas. Tyrell Peters takes him down, and the play is wiped out for a loss. Boy, you talk about speed. Tyrell Peters just turned on the speed, and then the tackle was polished off on the far side as the center's uh, Colin Rosenberg nailed him, and the loss goes from the 22 to the 18, a loss of four. There's a five-letter word that concerned the Sooners. That was noise. There's another five-letter word that really has to concern this Syracuse team, and that's speed, all of it in the white shirts. Now the shotgun formation as Morris is to the right of quarterback Kevin Mason and uh, Dardar to his left. Back to pass Mason. Shotgun. Looks up. Close pass. Caught at the 35. Complete to Marvin Harrison. He's down by Darius Johnson at the 38. So there's a gain of 20 and a first down for Syracuse. A 20-yard pass play. That's 
It's their longest play of the game. As Marvin Harrison made the catch. And a first down, number five only for Syracuse in the game at their own 38-yard line. Went from the 18 to the 38. Syracuse, first down, 10 yards to go. Oklahoma had them third and 12, let them out. That's not good. Kirby Dardar is out of the lineup now. We have uh, T. Buck Jones, the tailback for the first time. Morris, the fullback. Wide receivers left and right. Tight end, Chenoweth on the left. Fumble! Fumble snap and the pile up at the line of scrimmage. Baron Tanner was there, I think, and Syracuse did retain possession, but they will lose a yard. Falling on the ball for Syracuse was Melvin Tootin, who is that uh, Big East preseason, all Big East player. A loss of a yard, second down 11 for Syracuse from their own 37-yard line. Now Kirby Tartar uh, back in the lineup. And a tight end will be Roland Williams checking aboard. Coming out is Jason uh, Wilson. So double tight end now for Syracuse. One wide receiver to the right. In motion, Marvin Harrison from right to left. Double tight end, high formation. Kevin Mason gets the exchange. Down the line of scrimmage on the option play. Cuts up field and is ushered out of bounds for a very short game. Boy, that's a mystery why they would call that play. Cedric Jones on the tackle. Trailing 24-0. You line up in a tight formation and try to outrun the Sooners. Doesn't make much sense. The game from the 37 to about the 38 or 9. And Bob, more than that, they went to the short side of the They're field right. where they run out of room very quickly. And that's like an extra tackler, that sideline, especially to the short side. You know, you're, you're not necessarily criticizing, but you, you just wonder about a play like Why in the world would an offensive coordinator say, let's go to the short side of the field and outrun them? Two wide receivers, one left and one right. Man in the slot to the right. That's Kirby Darjar. In motion, Harrison from left to right. Third down play and about nine from the 39. Need to go to the Oklahoma 48. Back to pass a deep drop for Mason. Looks plenty of time. Nice grab. Now he gets away. Nice tackle at the 41. Arthur Atkins from Houston Lamar and Baron Tanner from Athens, Texas on the tackle of Kevin Mason. Game two of the 41, but it's fourth down for Syracuse, and they'll be forced to punt after gaining one first down in their initial possession of the second half. Let's check the statistics of their punter. Sean Reale is averaging 41 yards on four kicks. His longest was 44. Back is Darius Johnson to receive the Sooners leading 24 0, 11 46 to go in the third period. Way in the snap from. Uh, the deep man, the deep snapper for Syracuse. Line of scrimmage is the 41 in Syracuse territory. Snap is on the money to Reale. Here's the kick. Nice, long kick. Darius Johnson has to retreat. And lets it go over his head. Hits at the five. Takes a Syracuse bounce. Will be down inside the five. Boy, that's a crazy bounce for the football. It'll be at the two-yard line. What a great kick. A, a, a timeout on the field. The Sooners deep in their own territory. But the good news is they lead 24 0, 11 22 to go third period. Timeout. This is the Oklahoma Sooner Network. So the Sooners back deep after that 56 yard punt by Riali. It uh, was the smart thing for Darius Johnson to do. The ball was obviously going over his head, looked at like it's the five and going to the end zone. And he let it bounce. Of course, it had that weird bounce that football takes sometimes. And Syracuse down it at the three. Yeah, Bob, the rule of thumb is that if you're standing on the 10 yard line and the ball is over your head, you do not try to catch it. Steven Alexander loosening up as he's in the game at tight end. Actually, we have a double tight end as Jason Harmon and Steven Alexander both in there. Eric McGee, Dwayne Chandler, and Gerald Moore. I know that's, uh, yes it is, Gerald Moore. All right, from the three, own, their own three, first and ten. Eric McGee hands off in the end zone to Gerald Moore, cracks up the field, across the five to the six-yard line, and uh, maybe to the seven. A game from the three to the seven, a four-yard pickup for Gerald Moore, Dave Rebar who is from uh, through Pennsylvania, went to Mid-Valley High School, made the stop. Both guards, Cabell and Overton, and center Chuck Langston opening the hole and giving the Sooners a little more breathing room in the shadow of their own goalpost. Gerald Moore, seven carries for 41 yards at this point. P.J. Mills wide to the left, double tied in for Oklahoma, pitch back to Moore, sweeping the right side, cuts over the left tackle, gets up to the 10 and just across it. Will be a couple of yards away from that first down. Nice tackle by Ed Hobson, the nose guard. And he got some help from one of the other linemen, from uh, Chris Marks, the outside linebacker. Let's see where they've spotted it. They'll put it right at the 10-yard line, just the length of football across it. So it'll be a third down and three for Oklahoma from their own 10. With 10 minutes, 23 seconds to go third period. Sooners leading 24-0. That was the score by which they led at halftime. Oklahoma breaks the huddle. Wide to the left is P.J. Mills. 
High formation with Moore at the tailback. The pitch to Moore coming to his left side. Cuts up field. He gets across the 15. First down, Oklahoma. Nice blocking as he came outside. And a good dip of the shoulder. Got him outside and by one tackler. And again, we'll mention the fact that on that pit sweep, you pull the guards, lead the fullback. Bob said nice blocking. That was true, but there was also a lot of blocking out in front of the ball carrier. Designed just to pick up the first down, and Moore got it, and the Sooners keep this drive going. Tackled by Kevin Abrams, who's the right corner. 25-8, 158. 158, bringing down Gerald Moore, 230. is a tough job. From the 15, first and 10, high formation. One wide receiver to the right. Derek McGee hands off to his fullback. That's Dwayne Chandler. Dial drives up for about three or four to the 19, perhaps only the 18. He's from Aberdeen, Mississippi, two-year letterman, two-time All-Stater at Court and Great All-American at Aberdeen, Mississippi High School. He had uh, one 100-plus game in 1993. That was against Oklahoma State, Dwayne Chandler. You know, the Sooners talk about their three fine tailbacks in Allen, uh, uh, Moore, and Jeff Frazier, but Chandler was a tailback in high school, and he could play there. In fact, last year did play there a couple times. That's right. P.J. Mills wide right, double tied in. Stephen Alexander tied in left. Jason Harmon tied in right. Gary McGee hands the ball to Moore. Up the middle, finds a crack. Jumps up to the 25-yard line. May have the first down. Well, I think he's going to get a bad spot. The official comes in from this linesman from the near sideline and spots it just shy of the 25. Needed to get to the 25 for the first down. So I think it'll be third in inches. They perhaps will bring the chain out. Let's see what they do. No, no measurement. It'll be third and... Uh, Half a yard, let's say, for Oklahoma at the 24 and a half. That was a bad spot. 8.46 to go, a third period. Sooners leading 24-0. High formation, inches to go. Greg McGee to the fullback. Chandler easily has the first down, gets all the way to the 29 and another bad spot. Should have gotten to the 30 of from here. I'm going to quit complaining about the fishing, but he got, he, he came to rest at the 30. Official said he bounced to the 30, so he gives him only the 29. Bob, you keep talking about spot, and I really, I thought you were talking about your dog. <laughs> and I I'm thought you had a good dog, not it. a bad spot. <laughs> 8.35 to go third period. Sooners leading 24 to nothing, and they have a drive underway, which started at their own three. By formation with Chandler the fullback, more the tailback from the Oklahoma 29, the fake to the fullback. Derek McGee throws the pass, has Mills open, catches at the 42 40, 35 30, 25 20, 15, 10, 5. He fumbles the ball in the end zone and out of it. And it'll be a touchback, oh, and Syracuse no. will get the ball. Holy cow, what a play! Mills caught the pass on the dead run. He was hit at about the two. The ball went forward in and out of the end zone. Now there's a or a discussion at least, and the official rules, as we said, a touchback because the ball went out of the end zone, and so it's no touchdown. Syracuse by a first and ten at the 20, I believe. Well, Bob, I honestly thought that he might have crossed the plane of the goal line. Keep in mind, you don't have to have possession of the ball in the end zone if you cross the plane of the goal line. They're showing it on replay, and he yes, it did. he did fumble before he got to the goal line. He sure did. So, what a break. Have you ever seen anything like that? Thank goodness that wasn't the last play of the game at a 7-7 tie. 77-yard <laughs> completion. And Syracuse will have the ball for two. I said at the 20. It was knocked free of him uh, and went clear out of the end zone. The ball will be at the two. So, the Sooners went from their, their own three. They pinned Syracuse back at Syracuse, two. That was unbelievable. Mills uh, was wide open behind the receivers, the uh, Sooners, Derek McGee had pulled a great fake on the play action, and Mills had got behind the defensive back, caught the ball on the run, but he was run down and fumbled it just short of the goal. From the two, then, Syracuse wishbone formation. Quarterback Kevin Mason. Long single count from the Syracuse two. Sooners leading 24-0 third period. There's the fake, the fullback. He gives the second man through a tremendous pileup, and again, maybe a big yard to the three from the two to the three in Syracuse territory. Center's on top, 24 nothing, and almost had another six or seven. Eight minutes to go, third period. Bob, the Sooners gained 95 yards on that change of possession. They started at their own three, and Syracuse now starts at their own two. So the Sooners, on a change of possession, gained 95 yards without scoring. The ball is at the three, and it is second down nine. Again, the wishbone formation. Thomas at right half, Dar Dar at left half, Morris the fullback, quarterback Kevin Mason, double tied in, 
Handoff, fake handoff in the end zone. Back in the end zone is Mason, looking to pass still in his end zone. Now runs out of the end zone and is bumped out of bounds at about the six or seven. Be a gain from the three to the seven. Tyrell Peters knocked him out of bounds. So the gain from the three to the seven in Syracuse territory. It's a third down play in five. With 7.22 to go, third period, 24 nothing Oklahoma leads. Darius Johnson leaves the lineup and is replaced by Lyndall Davis. So Davis will go to left corner. Syracuse is three for seven on third down conversions. Ball just upfield from the seven. Again, the wishbone. They've run that entirely the series. Need to get to the 12 for the first down. Having to throw in seven. Again, the wishbone, as we said. Quarterback Kevin Mason. He's about a six-man line for Oklahoma. Fake the fullback. Mason comes outside. Makes a great fake. Gets across the 15. And still on his feet. It's 20 and out of bounds. Well, what a nice run by Kevin Mason. Rich Quasey finally got out of bounds. I'm feeling about the 22. That was a great run by Kevin Mason from Cheekton, Cheektonga, New York. And he had a, had a great fake at about the line of scrimmage. They got a couple of Sooners out of the play. Let's go down to Mark Matthews. All right, Darius Johnson being attended to by trainer Dan Pickett right now. He's got a cramp in his left hamstring, so he may be out of action here for a few moments. Dan Pickett giving him a little massage right now, but he's cramping up. 15-yard run there by Kevin Mason. That gives uh, Syracuse their sixth first down, second this half. Eye formation this time. At the top of the eye is Kevin, uh, or rather Kirby Dardar. The fake the fullback. Now Mason backs up the pass. He's being chased. He throws a long pass downfield. It's caught at the Oklahoma 35, at the 23 for 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Syracuse, as Larry Bush couldn't bring him down. There is a 78-yard touchdown pass to Marvin Harrison. Well, that's a two-touchdown swing because P.J. Mills would have given the Sooners a 31 to nothing lead. The score right now probably should be 31 to 7 instead of 24 to 7. So in reality, that's a two-touchdown swing. Sooners ahead by 24. Now their lead, if the extra point is good, will be cut to 17. But just a few moments ago, it could have been as high as 31. A, a 90, 98-yard drive in four plays. Oh, what an unusual turn of events. And the 78-yard pass to Harrison was the scoring play, and Bush couldn't get him down at the 25 in Oklahoma territory. Here's the snap. The ball being held by Mason. The extra point attempt is good. So with 7.02 to go in the third period, Syracuse draws some blood, and Oklahoma's lead cut from 24 to 7. Let's take the timeout. This is the Oklahoma Sooner Network. Oklahoma's lead cut with 7.02 to go third period, and Syracuse kicking off to Oklahoma from left to right. Olindo Mayer, Mayer will be kicking off from left to right. It'll be uh, Moore along with Mills back deep to receive. So Darius Johnson, Mike, is not back in that receiving unit because of that hamstring. And, I, and he has had some hamstring problems in the preseason, and I know they just don't want to take a chance on having him run back. He probably will play some more, but not on those long kickoff returns. Well, that fired the crowd up here, 50,000. Less a few left at halftime. We don't see many empty seats. Sooners had the crowd out of it and appeared to be going ahead, as Mike indicated, 31-0 when that unusual play happened. And then Syracuse comes back with a 98-yard drive to score. Principally on that long bomb. Here we go. Mayer will be kicking off. I don't mean old Gray either. This is Orlando Mayer. Here's the kick. High end over end. Coming up to take is Gerald Moore at the five. Moore goes toward the center of the field. Cuts up field now to 15. He comes to his left at the 25. And his tackle at the 29-yard line. Gerald Moore, a nice return. We have a man down on the field for Oklahoma. That's a 27-yard return by Gerald Moore. I believe that's Jason Harmon who's shaking up. Let's go down to Mark Matthew. Mark? Well, you know, earlier in the week on our pregame report, Dan Pickett told me that cramps may be a problem in here tonight. There's not a lot of air circulation in here. Players can overheat. Hydration is very important. Dan Pickett helping Harmon off right now, and I don't know if it's a cramp or something more serious, but apparently that's, uh, it looks that way. We'll find out here in a couple of moments. But uh, Darius Johnson, they are still working on his hamstring, massaging it. It was just purely a cramp. We'll update the Harmon situation as soon as possible. The ball is put at the 25, just shy of it. Harmon helped off the field. So they tied in to Stephen Alexander in place of Harmon. Derek McGee is the quarterback. Dwayne Chandler is the fullback. Gerald Moore is the tailback. 
We've not seen Jeff Fraser, by the way. Terrence Brown at wide receiver. There's Derek McGee getting the ball to Moore, left side, 25, 26, 27, perhaps, then pushed back on a nice tackle by Dan Conley. The inside linebacker on the left side. Good block uh, thrown in there by Stephen Alexander, that tight end, who replaced Jason Moore. The Sooners using four men alternately uh, in the game as the situation presents itself at tight end. They're using Jason Harmon, who's injured, Stephen Alexander, Michael McDaniel, and Rod Manuel. That was a two-yard pickup by Moore, second down eight for Oklahoma, their own 27. 6.23 to go third period, 24-7, Oklahoma leads. Albert Hall and Terrence Brown wide to the right. Tight end Alexander on the left. Derek McGee rolls to his right, lobs a pass downfield in heavy traffic and intended for Albert Hall incomplete at the midfield strike. He was well covered on the play by Bryce Bevel. And it'll bring up a third down play in eight for Oklahoma, throwing 27 down to Mark Matthews. All right, Dan Pickett just confirmed it's third quarter cramps. That's what's uh, hitting these Sooners right now. Cramps in both calves for Jason Harmon. And obviously the big concern is hydration, whether or not they're getting dehydrated out here, gentlemen. Let's take a look at these scores just in from our Rico fax machine. Compliments of Infomark, and we will after this play. High formation, big third down play for Oklahoma. Third and eight from the 27. Derek McGee drops straight back to pass. Green pass caught at, in the middle at the 25, at the 30. Wayne Chandler short of the first down. Tackle is the 32. He did to get to the 35. Nate Hemsley, who had been injured earlier, makes the stop, and the Sooners will be forced to punt. Florida defeated New Mexico State 70 to 21. Penn State leads Minnesota 35 to 3 in the second quarter. Notre Dame 7, Northwestern 3 in the second quarter. UCLA 12, Tennessee nothing in the second quarter. Texas A&M 9, LSU 7 in the third quarter. Baylor 20, Louisiana Tech halftime 20 to nothing. K-State 17 to 6 over Southwestern Louisiana in the third. Tulsa leads Missouri 13 to 10 in the third. And Scott Blanton back to punt. He punted twice for only 28.5 yard average in the first half. Step is on the money, and it's blocked. And it goes down at the Oklahoma 17. And now it's loose inside the 15. And it'll be Syracuse with the ball since that was a fourth down play. And that's the second time tonight the punt has been blocked. And boy, that's uh, the Syracuse Orange winner right back in this ball game with 5.13 to go in the third period. And that's going to have to really upset the Sooner coaching staff. They talk about the kicking game and the mistakes in the kicking game. Sooners have missed one field goal, and they've had two punts blocked. And if Syracuse scores now, we're going to have a barn burner for the rest of this game. So Syracuse blocks the kick. It was Jim Turner who blocked it, and the ball is at the 13-yard line in Oklahoma Territory. First down, 10 yards to go as the Orangemen have their team out. Let's see. The crowd really back into this, needless to say. And Syracuse has some confusion on offense, and they'll call a timeout. Timeout, 5-13 to go third period. Oklahoma 24, Syracuse 7. This is the Oklahoma Sooner Network. As Eric Chenoweth, who's a senior 6'3", 234, and William Walker, Willie Walker, is wide receiver along with Jason Wilson. But the, the wishbone formation now. From the 13 in Oklahoma Territory, Syracuse in possession. Harrison, the wide receiver left. Tight end Chenoweth on the right. From the 13, there should be a flag thrown there, as there is, and the, as the left tackle, Melvin Tootin, moved. As a matter of fact, I think about everybody did, except the quarterback, and that's a mess up for Syracuse. And after a uh, timeout, that's the first yeah. penalty for Syracuse tonight. That's tonight. the first penalty. The Sooners were penalized a total of 27 yards in the first half, and that is the first penalty against Syracuse that backs them up. And what... They're in field goal range. The Sooners are trying to prevent the touchdown, and that certainly helped because they've got to go all the way down to the three-yard line to get the first down, so the Sooners get a big break there. Now they come out of that wishbone and go to the I formation. Malcolm Thomas, the tailback. Wide receivers are left and right. Willie Walker to the right. Wilson to the left. Walker in motion from right to left. From the 18-yard line, Mason gives the ball off to Thomas. Back to his right. Gets to the 16. He's hit at the 15 and still churning now a flag as he's down at the 15 by Tyrell Peters. I don't know what the flag was all about. You see what that was all about is when the uh, play ended, the Malcolm Thomas was mad at himself for slapping the ground for something. Let's see. Face mask is the signal on Oklahoma. Uh-oh. So that's, uh, that will cost the Sooners some yards. The play ended at about the 14. 
And it'll penalize uh, five yards downfield. So Syracuse, uh, boy, the place have turned around. The crowd and Syracuse and the entire ball game after that K.J. Mills 77-yard pass. He was hit at the two, not the ball knocked away from him and out of the end zone. Syracuse came back on a 98-yard drive. Big, big play to 78-yard pass for the touchdown. And then the Sooners have a punt block. And now a penalty on a face mask. And the ball is at the nine-yard line. And it is a second down. And at the nine, they need to go to the three for the first down. Now they're back to the wishbone formation. Fullback being Morris. Quarterback, Kevin Mason. Two halfbacks on either side of those. And the fullback. Take the fullback. Give to Thomas. He's to the five. And then... Uh, Tackle right at the five-yard line by Tremaine Green. 21-6-0 and 238. Malcolm Thomas showing good speed. Came from the left halfback spot after the fake to the fullback and tackled at the five. So it's a third down play in two. Talked about the Sooners' ability to run and the speed they have on both sides of the ball. Syracuse knows that. That time they faked to the left and came back to the right hoping to catch the Sooners overreacting because of their quickness. And that was a good call by the Syracuse offensive coordinator. They again line up in the wishbone. Kevin Mason, the quarterback. A fullback is Terry Moore. The halfbacks are Kirby Tard Dardar and uh, Malcolm Thomas. Now they shift out of the wishbone. Wing left is Thomas. He goes in motion to the right from the five-yard line. The gift down the middle, and Dardar is swamped at the three. Good defense by Oklahoma. Tyrell Peters. It's very close to the first down, but it'll be a fourth down play, and they'll have another go at it at any rate. It's right at about the three-yard line. Depends on where they spot the football. And I believe it'll be a fourth down play. They have not signaled a measurement. That's a third down play. Third down play. Beg your pardon. The scoreboard has uh, messed us up. They were wrong since the penalty. We've been going by that scoreboard. Barry Giles now nose guard. It's third and a yard at about the three, just upfield from it. Wishbone formation. Syracuse in possession from the three-yard line. Kevin Mason gets the signal. Pitches the ball back to Thomas. Touchdown. Dardar on the touchdown run to the right. Kirby Dardar. Boy, he was wide open on the pitch to the right side. And Syracuse has scored two touchdowns here in the third period in the last four minutes and a blocked punt, and it's now 24-13, and the extra point will make it a 10-point game where it was a 24-point game at halftime. Wow, Mike. Boy, Bob, I tell you, you look at that uh, fumble by P.J. Mills going in, that would have broken the back of Syracuse and given the Sooners a 31-0 lead. Now it's a ball game, and the Sooners up by only 10 with more than a quarter to go. Holding the ball will be Kevin Mason. Trying the extra point will be Sean Reale. Ball's down, kick in the air, and it's good. So we have timeout, 3-12 to go third period. Oklahoma 24, Syracuse 14. This is the Oklahoma Sooner Network. The first downs to show for it, and no points with 3-12 to go in the third period, but still leading by 10. Here's the kickoff from left to right. As booting it is Sean Reale deep in the end zone, it's second, and will be touched back, and the Sooners will start from their own 20-yard line for their third possession of the third period. Cellular One's exclusive super system is the largest local calling area in Oklahoma, including Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Grand Lake, Ponca City, Stillwater, and now Lawton, Clinton, Weatherford, and Altus. Super system only from Cellular One. Let's go down to Mark Matthew. Mark? Yeah, that last kickoff right there when OU did not run it out of the end zone, several Syracuse players got right up into the Sooners' face, and you could see that they were talking a little trash out there. Syracuse has got a second win, no doubt about it. And now we have uh, Terry Collier at fullback. And the tailback for Oklahoma, I believe, is still Gerald Moore. Quarterback, Derek McGee. Two wide receivers to the right and one to the left. Derek McGee trying to change the play. Crowd cheers loudly. McGee on the option play. Pitches the ball back. Cutting up field is Moore. 25, 30-yard line. So it gets about 10 yards. Now, that was something, changing the play with the crowd yelling like it was. Bob, we mentioned that that's what Watson Brown was afraid of. The crowd has come alive. The noise factor is decibels above what it has been throughout the game. And the Sooners were trying to change the play at the line of scrimmage, and they almost had to uh, either call a timeout or watch the clock run down. But they finally got the play off, and they went to an option which gained a first down at the 30-yard line. But that's something the Sooners aren't going to be able to do. So Gerald Moore now has, as far as his uh, yardage gain, 70, 
63 yards he's picked up uh, rushing. Ball off the 30-yard line, Oklahoma, first and 10 on the 10-yard run. We have an injury on the near side as we have a brief hold up here. Nate Hemsley, who's been injured a couple of times this game, is injured. Dan Conley, the guy with nine knee injuries, playing in his sixth year, comes out on the field, and uh, we still have a brief delay until Hemsley he gets off the playing field at about the 25. Bob Conley has been held pretty much in check as far as the defense is concerned. He had only four tackles at halftime and really hasn't been in it much the second half because the centers really haven't had the ball that much, so they pretty much neutralized Conley. Ball at the 30-yard line, 3.05 to go, third period. Oklahoma leading by 10, 24-14, after leading 24-0 at the half. And appeared to be on their way to the 31-0 lead on that long pass play to P.J. Mills. 77 yards. At about the two-yard line, the ball was knocked away from him through the end zone, and Syracuse started from their own two. Bob, very quickly, we want to remind everybody that next week, the Sooners will play at Texas A&M, and it is a 4 o'clock kickoff, 4 o'clock Central Time next week for our broadcast from Texas A&M. Okay, we're ready to go. Kemsley was carried off, left knee injury, and now the Sooners have first and 10 from their own 30. P.J. Mills and uh, Albert Hall wide to the right. Tight end is McDaniel. Handoff goes to Gerald Moore. Juke steps, 37, 40 yard line, or 35 yard line. Well, across the 30, up to the 35. Nice tackle by Dave Rebar from through Pennsylvania. Gerald Moore got from the 30 up to the 35, and it is second down five, Oklahoma throw in 35. That's a quick pop by the tailback, and he has to read the block by his center. If the center has been able to take his man to the right, he cuts off that block to the left and vice versa. And the start center is Chuck Langston from Beaumont, Texas, Westbrook, who really came to the fore last year at that position, junior 21-6-1 and 268. Mills to the left, wide right is Albert Hall. One back behind quarterback, Eric McGee. Pitch to Moore, sweeping right, cuts up field, puts the head down, and a tremendous pile at the 40. Boy, he has great power, does Gerald Moore, and has the first down as Chris Marks, along with Dave Rebar. What a great run by Moore. Got from the 35, was hit at about the 38, and then put that head down and got to the 41-yard line. So the Sooners now come from their own 20 to their own 41 in three plays. This will be the fourth play of the drive, leading 24-14. And the Sooners now faced with taking the crowd out of the game again and just sustaining a long march and hoping hope to get a score out of it, run out the third quarter, and just again dominate this ballgame. And Jeff Fraser has just come into the lineup from Oklahoma City Westmore, 26-2, 2-13. Fraser, the only back behind quarterback, Derek McGee. First and 10, Oklahoma for 41. Fraser gets the ball, cuts back to his left, cuts up the middle, is hit at the 43-yard line and pushed back. Fraser's first carry gets him about uh, two yards, tackled by Dan Conley, that linebacker we've been talking about from time to time. A two-yard pickup for Fraser, who has great speed. He's the third tailback for Oklahoma. Fraser's coming out after that one play with a broken chin strap. 1.22 to go in the third period. Oklahoma's not scored in the third period. Syracuse has put on a long touchdown drive, blocked a punt, and then scored on a short touchdown drive of 13 yards and three plays. Fraser's still in there. 105. Fraser's still in the lineup. He's got the chin strap fixed. Garrick McGee comes up to the line of scrimmage. Four seconds on the play clock. Three seconds. Need to get the snap. One second. Gets the snap. Garrick McGee floats to his right. Looks upfield. Plenty of time. Throws for Albert Hall. Incomplete. Oh. It was right in the breadbasket at the 40, at the 37-yard line. But there was a flag. I think the time may have run out just before the ball was snapped. The flag flew on the far side. Let's check it. Well, Bob, if that's true, the Sooners get a break because they get the down over. That would have been third and eight. And in some ways, it is a break for the Sooners. There is no option for Syracuse. They can't decline the penalty because the whistle blew before the snap of the ball. So the Sooners get an extra down instead of third and eight. It'll be second and 13, but it does give them the extra play. They're back at the 38-yard line. Need to go to that to the 49, so let's say second and 12. Second down, 12 yards to go from the 30, uh, 38 yard line, must go to the 49. Eye formation, Fraser at the top of the eye. Here's the exchange, fake the fullback. Greg McGill, the keeper, pitches to Fraser. He hits the hit the backfield down for a loss at the 35 yard line, loss of three. That was not, not a real smooth option play, as Syracuse had it defense very, very well, and now we'll bring up 
a third down play and about 14 yards to go for Oklahoma, leading with 37 seconds to go third period, 24-14. One of the plays that has been so successful for the Sooners tonight has been the screen. You've seen him screen left and right and up the middle, and I would not be surprised that the Sooners went to a screen again, hoping that they catch Syracuse in a blitz. Gerald Moore back in the lineup, but tailback, and Michael McDaniel had tied in on a third and 15, let's say, from the 34-yard line. Two wide receivers left, Albert Hall and P.J. Mills. Garrick McGee back to pass. He's being rushed. He throws a pass up the middle. It's caught by Conjure at the 40. He's to the 42, and that's way short of the first down. Terry Conjure making his first reception of the night, and the Sooners will be forced to kick. Leading with 22 seconds of the clock running in the third period, 24-14. But Syracuse dominating the third period. And the Sooners' third period woes continue. Bob, if you remember, a year ago, the third quarter was the big bad quarter for the Sooners last year. That game went for eight yards to the 42-yard line. Fourth down play in nine. And there's the end of the third period. That's the end of the third period with the score. Oklahoma 24, Syracuse 14. This is the Oklahoma Sooner Network. Him is the deep snapper. 24-14 the score. Oklahoma leads as we start the final period of play of the season opener in Syracuse, New York. Sooner football brought to you by Train and your Train heating and air conditioning dealer. It's hard to stop a train. The third quarter, it's a mystery, Mike, why the third quarter has been a problem for over Oklahoma. and over. Right. The last couple of years. Amazing. All right, Wickersham We'll center it back to Scott Blanton. Back deep to receive is Marvin Harrison. Ten men on the line of scrimmage. Here's the snap, right on the money. Scott Blanton gets the kickaway. Not a very long kick, wobbly kick. Harrison comes way up, takes it to the 27-yard line, gets a block or two, and then Juan Penny has him at the 32-yard line. Harrison, a nice return, gets it to about the 33, 32 or 33. And Syracuse will start there first and 10, Oklahoma leading 24-14. Bob, most football teams have the names of their players on the backs of their jerseys. However, Syracuse does not. They used to, but this year they said they felt that they wanted to have a better aura of team unity instead of individuals, so they do not have the names on the backs of their jerseys at all. It's the fourth possession for Syracuse, and they have it at the 33-yard line there on the field. Darius Johnson is back in there, by the way for the Sooners at cornerback left side. High formation for Syracuse. Harrison in motion from left to right. Chenoweth, the tight end on the right side. Tailback is Dardar. Here's uh, down the line of scrimmage, Mason keeps it up field. He spins, the ball is free, it's fumbled at about the 40 yard line, a pile up, and the Sooners signaling they got it. Let's see what the official does, signals. The ball was stripped and the Sooners have recovered a fumble. Well, that was an important turnover as the ball was stripped from quarterback Kevin Mason. Didn't see who was the stripper. Perhaps it was David Campbell. <laughs> well, I don't know who the stripper is either. But <laughs> at any rate, when you run an option, just because of the very nature of the play, you don't tuck the ball away. Mason ran the option, cut up field, and he had not put the ball away, and the Sooners simply stripped it from him. Bob, this is the big drive of the ball game. The Sooners can pretty much put it away and recapture the momentum, but they're going to have to get points on this drive. The Sooners did not have a good third quarter, to say the least, although they picked up four first downs. The ball is at the Syracuse 40. It, it, it Campbell was the one that recovered the fumble. Collier, the fullback. The gift to Collier. Leaps over the line of scrimmage and jumps down to the 35 for a five-yard pickup. Good offensive line surge there by Cavill, Langston, Milton Overton, J.R. Conrad, and Harry Stamps. Double tight end, Stephen Alexander, Rod Manuel on that play. 14-24 to go in the game. Just underway in the final period. Oklahoma leading 24-14. And the backfield, Gerald Moore tailback behind Terry Collier and, and Garrick McGee. And Dan Conley just came back from the locker room, and he's got his right leg just below the knee, very heavily taped, so he's having some problems with that knee, Bob. That was a gain of four. They've spotted it at the 36 rather than the 35, as we call it, so let's call it second and six. McGee pitches to Moore, sweeping the left, cuts downfield, jumps across the 35 for about a gain of two or three, from the 36 to perhaps the 33. Let's see where they mark it, maybe 32. And it'll bring up a third down play and a couple of yards to go for Oklahoma at the Syracuse 32 or 33 yard line. Here where they put it down. I call it the uh, 32. 13.35 to go. Put it at the 32 yard line. 
Need to go two yards, a little bit more than that for the first down. Conley back in the lineup at linebacker. High formation. Conyer at fullback. Moore tailback. Double tight end. Here's Derek McGill. Busted play. Goes to his left. Cuts downfield. Has the first down at the 25-yard line. McGee went back. Wanted to hand off. Nobody there. So he ran with it and got the first down. Busted play. And Syracuse had the play that was called defense well. The Sooners were going to go to the right on the pitch sweep. Syracuse went to the left or the Sooners' right. And McGee, when he couldn't find anybody to hand to, ran to the left. There was only a contained man over on that side, and he picked up the first down on a busted play. Seven yards picked up. Derek, uh, Derek McGee from uh, Tulsa, Washington. 21, 6'4", and 190. He's done a good job in his debut. High formation now. P.J. Bills, the only wide receiver to the right. The pitch goes back to Moore. Sweeping the right end, cuts down the, the 25 and gets inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. Rod yard line, Rod Gadsen playing the left corner on the stop. So the game for Gerald Moore from the 25 to the 22-yard line. Pitch sweep is just like a single-wing tailback. You run wide either side, and when you find a hole, you cut into it. But you don't have a pre-prescribed hole to cut into when the play starts. Let's go down to Mark Matthews. Watson Brown having words with Garrick McGee right now. Twice in a row, Garrick called the wrong play. And uh, Watson was a little upset. That'll happen in an opening game. Wide to the left was P.J. Mills. Double tight end for Oklahoma. Eye formation. McGee gives the ball to Moore over right tackle. Cracks downfield across the 17 to the 15-yard line. Boy, good hole opened up. Gerald Moore over the right side goes from the 22 down to the 15, and that's where he needed to go for the first down. Let's see where they spotted. He wasn't trying to juke anybody. He, he wanted that first down, and he ran on a straight line, Bob, and that is the shortest distance between two points, <laughs> and we're talking about the two points that are stretched between the first down markers. <laughs> well, he was just a half yard shy or less, so it's a third down, inches to go for Oklahoma. Double tied in, Rod Manuel tied in left, Stephen Alexander tied in right, Derek McGee over the right side, goes outside, right tackle J.R. Conrad and gets the first down inside that 15-yard line at about the 13. Now credit McGee on that play because a quarterback sneak is not an option, and that's what it ended up to be, a one-man option because as he tried to move over the center, there was no hold, so he slid to the outside and just dived forward and got the first down. It was not an option, but with the hole plugged up the middle, McGee did a fine job of ad-libbing to the right and hooking the Sooners down for another first down. 13-yard line, I got a two-yard gain, the lower two on the play. P.J. Mills, the only wide receiver, he's left. Double tied in, eye formation. Collier gets the handoff over the right side, push back. Got close to the 10 and was pushed back hard. Terry Collier, 6-0 and 220, a junior. Sociology major, the second leading rusher in 1993 for OU. That time he got to the 10 for a pickup of three. Wilkie Bazil, who is the left tackle from Spring Valley in New York, went to Rockland High School, makes the stop. Sooners knocking at the door at the Syracuse 10, second down, seven yards for the first down, 10 yards for a possible touchdown, 11 minutes to go in the game, Oklahoma leading 24-14. P.J. Mills, wide left, double tight end for Oklahoma. High formation, give to Moore. Jukes to the left, to the right, down the middle to about the five-yard line, then is pushed back. Gerald Moore from Houston Yates, impressive. Bob, a late score. Texas A&M, the school that the Sooners will play next week, now trailing LSU 13-9 in the third quarter in that game at Baton Rouge. They'll put the ball at the six. That brings up a third down, three for the first down, six for a possible touchdown. Ball right in the center of uh, the goalpost. Well, actually, it's on the hash mark to the right. And here's P.J. Mills splitting to the left side. Double tight end, third down, playing about three. Derek McGee gives to Moore around the right side. He's pushed back, and then he fights his way down to the one-yard line. He was hit at about the three, but kept going and got to the one, and that'll be first and goal, Oklahoma. A great determined run by Gerald Moore. And I'll tell you something. With the ball in scoring territory and the Sooners trying to overpower the defense, you're going to run more, more than Allen because of the power size that he gives you, and he has certainly provided that. Sooners will have a first and goal, and this could put the ball game away if they can get it in and really credit Gerald Moore. He has run hard, hard, hard. And often. 95 yards gained for Gerald Moore. They'll put it at the two. He called it at the one. It's just downfield from the two. First and goal with 9.55 to go in the game. It's the full house T formation. Gary McGee fumbles the snap, and there's a pileup. Sooners recovered, but Garrett they never had control of that snap from center Chuck Langston. He fumbled it, and the Sooners immediately got on it. 
And let's see where they spot the ball after all the bodies are unpiled here. May have lost a yard back to the three. Dwayne Chandler, I think, fell on it. It's second goal from the three. Gerald Moore has 95 yards rushing. He did not have that figure a year ago. The best he did a year ago was 85 yards in the bowl game against Texas Tech. So this is a career high for Gerald. He's 19 years of age. Gerald Moore back in there. And it's the I formation. They're out of the full house tee. Derek McGee gives the ball to Moore. Over right tackle. Puts the head down. Flag is thrown in the middle of the pile as he cracks down close to the goal line. Syracuse saying they recovered a fumble. Let's see. And we didn't see a fumble. It looked as though he was stopped short. Maybe that's what they're signaling. And the flag was thrown right in the middle. I don't know what that was. So we'll sort out things and see what the result is. The umpires won through the flag from the defensive, right behind the defensive line. They're still trying to get the ball. 9.07 to go. Oklahoma leading 24-14. Play started at the three. Now the referee comes out and he'll, ex he'll explain things to us, hopefully. Holding. I guess Oklahoma oh is the call. Wow. Holding is the calling us Oklahoma. Apparently there was no uh, fumble. The line of scrimmage was the three. The, the holding penalty will be marked off from the point of the infraction. Six penalties, 42 yards against Oklahoma. Sooners have not scored here in the second half. They led 24-0 at the half, and now it's 24-14. As Syracuse scored twice in the third period. So that ball is back at the 13-yard line. Now it is second down and goal to go from the Syracuse 13. And in reality, they only have two downs, the second and third down, because if they don't score, they'll probably go the field goal route on fourth down. So down, and you say four down territory, uh-uh, it's two down territory here. At the 13-yard line, the replacement's in. Let's see who's in the lineup. Mike McDaniel is in at tight end. We have two wide receivers, actually three, McDaniel and Mills wide left. Here's Garrick McGee, handoff down the middle. That's down to the five-yard line. McGee doesn't hand off, he keeps the ball over the right side. At the floor, the play went left, McGee kept it and got down, boy, was that a surprise play, from the 13 down to about the six. I'm guessing that was a quarterback draw, the play call, because McGee did not look for a receiver. He was gonna run all the way. I have to believe that was a call play. Well, Bob, here's a big play in the ball game. It's third down. The ball is at the six-yard line. If they don't make it, they'll have to try for three. Terry Conner is at a fullback. Derek McGee looking over the sideline for the play to call. Play clock at 14 seconds. Now McGee steps into that huddle. Gerald Moore is there. Collier. Play clock is down to five. And um, three seconds, two seconds. McGee leans under. And time, just as he snaps the ball, runs out pass. It's caught at the five. But the play won't stand because of delay of the game. They were having confusion getting the play called. And never got it called in time. It'll cost the Sooners five. And that's the inexperience of Garrick McGee because he had to take a look at that play clock. It's right above his head behind the goal post and see that he really didn't have a chance to get the play off and he should have called timeout. This will cost the Sooners another five yards. Now they'll get the down over, but right now that uh, really has the penalties down here have cost the Sooners right now a touchdown. They have now called a timeout, but it may be a little bit too late. Well, I think they call the timeout. They're saying perhaps right before the, the clock ran out because they haven't. I believe that's what the call is. They, okay. they rule they call the timeout before the clock ran down. So somebody called timeout just before the ball was snapped. And well, the Sooners, Sooners break the huddle. Mills and Albert Hall, wide left. More the tailback. Collier, the fullback. Derek McGee, the quarterback. Tied in on the right is Michael McDaniel. Now the ball is set, ready for play by the referee, Steve Yuschek. Here's McGee, back to pass. He looks to his right. He rolls to his right. He looks in the end zone, throws back to his left. Oh, and it's all most intercepted. Wow. He was throwing the ball for more. Perhaps he was throwing it away. He did throw it away. There's no doubt about it. He threw that into the ground on purpose when he saw the only receiver that he had called on the left side was being covered very wisely threw the ball into the ground, and the Sooners are now going to have to settle for a field goal. Well, these scores just in from our Rico fax machine. Compliments of Infomark. In the fourth quarter, Tulsa 20, Missouri 17. Fourth quarter, Kansas State 24, Southwest Louisiana 6. 
a final North Carolina defeats TCU 27 to 17. LSU leads Texas A&M 13 to 9 in the third quarter. Scott Blanton has a 30 yarder. He missed a 35 yarder. This will be a 24 yarder. Snap, ball down, kick is good. He hit it. A 24 yard field goal. So the Sooners up their margin to 13 points as they lead 27 14 with 7.47 to go in the game. So the Sooners do get some points out of it, Mike, but you got to give Syracuse credit. Their defense played well. Yes, they did, and the Sooners had some confusion. They were hit with two penalties. Well, one holding penalty, which really cost the touchdown. That was a very costly penalty. And one ends. Keep in mind that a lot of those games played in the Midwest are an hour behind what we're doing because we're in the Eastern time zone. Scott Blanton will be kicking off from left to right. Jim Turner, the guy that blocked the kick earlier for Syracuse, and uh, Kirby Dardar are back to receive, standing at the five-yard line. The wind is not a factor, but interestingly enough, the kickers that have kicked from left to right tonight have not kicked it as far as they have when it's right to left. Maybe the air conditioning is going that way. I don't know. After all, this is the carrier dome. Here we go with the kickoff. Blanton booms that one. There's a long kick for you. But only at the goal line, it's taken by Jim Turner. 5, 10, 15. And he tries to leap over a tackler at the 23. That's Larry Bush. Larry Bush and Tim Denton. Tim Denton was there, I believe, for grabbing first. And they brought down the 23. 23-yard return. 23-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go for Syracuse. As they've had the ball only one play in the fourth period. And as Mike Treps mentioned, we have 7.41 to go. That's how the Sooners dominated ball control in the fourth period, even though they only got three points out of it. Syracuse will have Morris at fullback, Kirby Dardar at tailback, Marvin Harrison wide to the left, and uh, Jason Wilson wide right. In motion is the tight end, Chenoweth, from slot left across the formation. Behind the quarterback, now here's Mason down the line of scrimmage. Pitches back, it's the reverse, and the pitch back on a standing play to Wilson. He's up to the 35 to the 40 and out of bounds at the 44-yard line. That was a gimmick play. Larry Bush on the tackle. It appears it'll be option right, but coming back the other way on a reverse behind the uh, the would-be pitch man was wide receiver Jason Wilson, and he got a gain from the 23 up to about the 44-yard line. And the Sooners had absolutely no containment because whoever was on the right side hit when the play went to the left side, and there was no one home for the Sooners, and that was a bad defensive play. 21-yard gain by Jason Wilson on that reverse for Syracuse. Syracuse first down, 10 yards to go. That's their eighth first down in the game. Oklahoma leads 27-14. Kevin Mason down the line. Now he backs up, looks to pass, fires a pass down the middle, and it's knocked away in a great defensive play by Anthony Fogel, who intercepted earlier. Pass was intended for Jason Wilson. Fogel did a great job there. He's from Houston Westbury. 19-6-1 and 195. Got his first career OU interception in the ball game early. He's a 4.47 speedy youngster. Marvin Harrison, who has already caught one long touchdown pass. Credit Harrison, and, and we'd have to take a look at the replay, but it appeared when the ball was underthrown, he did a good job of preventing Fogle from intercepting the ball. Second down, 10 for Syracuse, from their own 44. 7.26 to go in the game. High formation. Dardar is a tailback. Morris is the fullback behind Kevin Mason. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Mason on the draw play. Gives to Dardar. He's up the midfield strike. He and out of bounds into the Syracuse bench at the 46-yard line, or at the 36-yard line. John Anderson nailed him, but it was a nice run and good blocking by Kirby Dardar from the 44 at Syracuse territory, about a 20-yard pickup. And I don't know what Syracuse said at halftime, but they figured out something in the Oklahoma defense because they run the ball much better in the second half. They'll spot the ball at the 36-yard line, as we call it, in Oklahoma territory. Again, from the 44, Syracuse territory, 20 yards downfield. 20-yard pickup. So they got a 21-yard run from Wilson, a 20-yard run that time from Dardar. And first and 10, I formation at the Oklahoma 36-yard line. Mason, the quarterback, calls the signals from the eye. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Draw play. Gives it again. Same play. Dardar tripped and then he's the tackle polished off by Tyrell Peters. That after a pickup of a yard, Dardar has the running room, but he tripped. And uh, that slowed him up and allowed Peters to get to him. But the, boy, the, the hole was there on the left side. Bob, you mentioned the fact that Syracuse has taken the momentum away from the Oklahoma Sooners. And again, you hearken back to that touchdown that wasn't when P.J. Mills coughed the ball up as he tried to go into the end zone. And a 31 to nothing game is now a 27 to 14 squirmer. 
Wishbone formation from the Oklahoma 35. Second down, nine yards to go. Kevin Mason, the quarterback. Shooter showing a uh, blitz, a fake handoff. No, and he does hand off into the line. Mario Freeman nails it after a pickup of two. Crowd booing on the play as there was a handoff to Kirby Darndar. The Sooners had the blitz off. They ran right into the strength of it. Faked me out for the moment. And the game was two from the 30, or actually one from the 35 to the 34. So it's third down play and eight for Syracuse of the Oklahoma 34. The Sooners did blitz, and Fred Lewis, who was regarded as the third best junior college prospect in the nation, that nose guard made a nice play as he wrecked the play coming up the middle. It's a shot now, third down eight from the Oklahoma 34 high snap, but quarterback Mason has plenty of time to throw. He'll run with it. 35, 30, 25, 20, and out of bounds. Way down at the 19 yard line. Right at the 20, just inside it. Boy, he was back to pass from the shotgun. Had plenty of time to throw. The Sooners had everything covered. He ran with it, and he got from the 34 down to about the 19 yard line. So eating up yardage and huge chunks. Got 15 yards on that play. We got a 21 yard run by Wilson, a 20 yard run by Dardar, a 15 yard run by the quarterback Mason and Syracuse has their 10th first down of the game and it's first and 10 at the 20 yard line of Oklahoma. I formation. Harrison motion from wide left across the formation of the right. Quarterback Mason hands off to Dardar over the right side. Big hole. 15. 13 yard line where he ends up. Game of seven. And Syracuse has driven from their own 23 to the Oklahoma 13 and never gone to a third down. Anthony Fogel on the tackle at the Oklahoma 13-yard line. Boy, this is amazing. Dardar now has 62 yards rushing. Jason Wilson limps off the field, by the way. And here is Marvin Harrison wide to the left. Double tight end now for Syracuse. High formation at the 13, second down, three for the first down, 13 for a possible touchdown for Syracuse. In motion, Harrison from formation wide left. Behind quarterback Mason. He's in motion. Now Mason down. And a great tackle made by Baron Tanner, who broke through and nailed quarterback Mason just after he got the snap from center. He's trying to go down on an option play. Boy, Tanner, he's 6'5 and 302 and lightning quick. We had talked about Baron Tanner earlier in the ball game, and he is somebody you're going to have to keep your eye on because he may be the next great defensive lineman the Sooners have, and he showed why on that play. It's third and long. You can't believe Syracuse will go the field goal route, so they really are in four-down territory. It's third and seven from the Oklahoma 17, just upfield from it. Now we have Chenna with the tight end, shifting from tight end left to tight end right. Split backs, one of the few times they've gone split backs. Harrison motion from right to left, now goes back to his right. Mason fakes the handoff, he's rolling to his right to pass. He looks downfield, he lobs the pass downfield, caught, and down immediately at the six for a first down is Eric Chenna with making the catch, and he's tackled by Fogel. But again, from the 17 to the six, that's 11 yards, and a first and goal for Syracuse. Their fourth first down on the drive, and that's the first time or the second time, actually, they've gone to a third down the drive. Boy, the Sooners have really bitten on some reverse type of plays in this drive. And that is another case of nobody being home on a throwback pass. From the six-yard line, first and goal, wishbone formation. We have in the game 407 to go. Oklahoma leading by a score of 27-14. Fake the fullback, back to pass. It is a pass. Oh, touch. No, it dropped it. He dropped it. Had a man wide open. Dardar. Back to pass was Mason, and after faking down the middle on a play action from the wishbone, he threw to Dardar, and it was incomplete. Dropped it in the end zone near side. Actually threw it behind him, and the Sooners sigh a sigh of relief there. Bob, they, they've had receivers wide open on this particular drive, with the exception of the almost interception by Fogel. The wishbone again for Syracuse. His right half is Malcolm Thomas. Left half, Kirby Dardar. The fullback is Terry Morris. Quarterback, Kevin Mason. Double tied in from the Oklahoma Six. Second down goal to go. Kevin Mason. Option play off the wishbone. Cuts into the five. Touchdown. Nobody touched him. Nobody touched him. He went around the left side. And that was an incredible drive for Syracuse. A six-yard touchdown run for Mason. And that gets them now to within 27-20. And the extra point would make it a six-point game. Well, Bob, if they successful they pull within six which means a touchdown and an extra point beat the Sooners 353 to go and you have to know that the Sooners are going to look to their offense to grind out the rest of this ball game so will
Syracuse try an onside kick? If I were them, I'd have to try the onside kick rather than hope Oklahoma will not make a first down with the remaining 3.53 to go. That was a 77-yard drive in 11 plays. And Sean Reale trying the extra point. Ball down, kick here. Flag is thrown. Flag is thrown. And I believe the kick was good. Let's see what the uh, infraction was, which team it was on. Now the referee, Steve Juszczyk, will tell us. The illegal procedure against Syracuse. So they'll have to kick the extra point again. The attempt, that one was good. They'll penalize him five yards, and they'll have uh, quarterback Sean Reale will go at it again. He did not see any action last year. Actually, Mr. Juszczyk made the wrong call the first time, and he corrected it there. That's only the second penalty against Syracuse, and Bob, penalties have really hurt the Sooners. You can look back and see the Sooners cost themselves a drive in the first quarter when they had third and one on a penalty, and then a holding penalty on the goal line cost them a touchdown. Here's the extra point attempt now from 25 yards out. The line of scrimmage is the eight. High snap, balls down. Kick is good. He hit the extra point. So it's 27-21 with 3.53 to go in the game and a sooner blowout at halftime and early in the third period, what it appeared to be is now a real seat stormer as Syracuse has scored three of the five times they've had the ball. Paul Anderson, in other words, they half expect an onside kick. Very good point. Syracuse also has uh, many of their receiving types in there with the good hands. So the good hands people also has beat Missouri 2017. So Coach Rado gets a big win on the road at Missouri of the Big Eight. Tulsa winning over Missouri 20 to 17. And that's the debut of Larry Smith, the coach of Missouri, an inauspicious one. Well, the ball is at the 35-yard line where Orlando Mayer will kick off. Now he backs up. Everyone lined up at the 25. We have 353 to go. Center lead down to six points, 27-21. An incredible turn of events here in the second half. Here's a deep kick. Darius Johnson waits for it, takes it, fumbles it in the end zone, and will touch it down. And it'll be first and ten centers up to 20. Of course, no time ran off the clock since that ball was touched back. The crowd, of course, very much a factor now as the centers start from the 20. Crowd of 48,000. The official crowd, uh, 48,000 plus, just barely shy of capacity. Oklahoma with a backfield of Terry County at fullback. Derek McGee is the quarterback. Of course, he's gone all the way, but let's see, make sure he was finally checking up earlier. And Gerald Moore is the tailback. Lock receivers are left and right. Crowd deafening. And the Sooners want a timeout. Derek McGee calls a timeout. With 3.53 to go, I didn't like the offense opposed to the defense he was seeing, I suppose. Well, they didn't hurt themselves because the clock had not started. They didn't hurt themselves by stopping the clock on their own, which is what Syracuse would like to have them do. But, Bob, the noise now is what we heard. I can hardly hear you on the earphones. The noise is deafening, and I'm sure that Garrick McGee called the play, and the Sooners did not line up the way the play was called. So he wanted to go out and talk to Watson Brown. And, Bob, what might happen is Watson might call two or three plays in a row. Here. Check the lineup. Tony Jones and uh, Double D. Devon Darius in the lineup at the safety. Oklahoma breaks the huddle now. Crowd is deafening, as you can hear. High formation. Derek McGee keeps the ball. Derek pitches the ball back to Moore. He's hit the backfield and tackled for a loss at the 18-yard line. The clock continues to run with 3.43 go. Well, the Sooners just getting nothing out of anything here. Well, Bob, Right now, Syracuse knows, or they, they think they know, that Oklahoma is not going to throw the football, so they have ganged the line of scrimmage with seven men to stop either the option or the tailback play and hope to get the ball back. So the Sooners might have to throw, even though they don't want to. 3.19 to go in the game. Hawk is running as the Sooners huddle. And they break the huddle. Chuck Langston over the ball, eye formation. Gerald Moore, the tailback. 
Derek McGee goes back to pass. He looks. He hits. He sets. At the 11-yard line. They'll mark it at the 12 as he is sacked by Dave Rebar. Derek McGee sacked at about the 12-yard line. Let's see where they put it precisely. And we got a third down play as they lost about six on that one. They'll put it to 13, the five-yard loss. That brings up a third down play and 17 for Oklahoma, leading only by six points, 27-21. It was a one-on-one -on -one call, but the receiver just couldn't come free, and Garrick McGee is lucky he didn't fumble. They put the ball to 12. So back to my original comment, a loss of six. And they need to go to the 30 for the first down. The ball is at the 12-yard line in Oklahoma territory. Two wide receivers to either side as we have uh, flags going before the snap. Crowd is deafening and 2.16 to go. Well, the Sooners badly need to pick up a first down. And it'll be against Oklahoma, the penalty marks against Oklahoma. This crowd is really coming into play. We talked about it so much during the week. The media has written about it and talked about it, but it's really a factor right now. The penalty puts the ball back from the 12-yard uh, line back to the seven, and the Sooners need 23 yards on a third down play. In the shadow of their own goal, leading only by six, 27-21. Two wide receivers to either side. Eric McGee on the quarterback keeper, 10. He's upfield to the 15, still fighting to the 16-yard line. Didn't want to take any chances, and now Coach Paul Pascaloni wants to call a timeout with 2.05 to go to stop that clock. And that's what happens. Antoine Pons on the tackle of Derek McGee, who went from the seven-yard line up to the 16. It's fourth down play for Oklahoma, 14 yards to go. The one thing that Oklahoma had to do was ball control. And for the first time in this half, and one of the few times in this game, they could not do it. They will turn the ball over on this punt. There will be less than two minutes to go. The timeouts are not that important to Syracuse because you can stop the clock on offense much more than you can on defense. An incomplete pass, stepping out of bounds. There's a lot of ways you can stop it on offense. So Syracuse has more than enough time, and they're going to have excellent field position right around the midfield stripe after this punt. And what was, or what looked to be an Oklahoma runaway, particularly if Mills goes into the end zone with that long touchdown pass to give the Sooners a 31 to nothing lead, has now turned into a potential disaster. From the 15 is where they've spotted the football. They moved it back. And it is a fourth and 15. Scott Blanton will be back to kick. Taylor Wickersham will be the deep snapper. And back to uh, receive the kick, Marvin Harrison. 10 men on the line of scrimmage. Blanton has had two kicks blocked tonight. And uh, one of them led to a touchdown. That was in the uh, fourth, in the third period. 10 men on the line of scrimmage. Everyone pointing out who they're going to block. Wickersham to center. Gets the ball on the main to Blanton. He'll go back to the end zone and take a safety. He took a safety. Blanton took the snap and ran out of the end zone, taking a safety, not risking a block punt. A very good play for this reason, Bob. Uh, Syracuse still has to score a touchdown. A field goal won't do it. The Sooners just gained 20 yards and will punt from the 20 rather than punting from inside their own 10. So what they did is give themselves perhaps another 15 to 20 yards of field position. They'll get a free kick from the 20. They'll be able to cover it a lot better because they can spread from sideline to sideline on their punt coverage, something they couldn't do if they punted from inside the 10. So a very wise choice by the Sooners to take the intentional safety and free kick from the 20-yard line. So it'll be the ball at the 20, Oklahoma with a free kick, and now leading only by four, 27-23, but as uh, Mike Treps indicated, that really uh, has no significance because they must score a touchdown to win. Oklahoma huddling on the far side, Syracuse huddling around Paul Pascaloni on the near side. As the Sooners need to play some D here after this punt, the free kick and stop Syracuse. Bob, in some ways, Blanton has kicked off better than he has putted, and he may elect to kick off from the 20 rather than putt. It'll be interesting to see what he chooses to do or what the coaches he's going to kick off. I thought that might happen simply because he can use the tee and get an awful lot of height and distance on a kickoff where he has not done that well putting. 
So the ball will be at the 20. Let's go down to Mark Matthew. Mark, what's the attitude down there? Well, I tell you what, this game is really boiling down to the composure and poise of two young quarterbacks, both seeing their first varsity start here tonight. And I tell you what, whoever's got the poise right now may win this game. 2-0-1 to go as the Sooners will kick off from their own 20. Dardar and Harrison are the deepest men back. After taking the safety voluntarily, the Sooners uh, plant and ran out of the end zone. 27-23 is the score. Oklahoma leads by four points with 2.01 to go. Here's Blanton taking off a line drive kick. He nailed it. It's taken by Dardar at the 10 to the 15 to the 20, 25, 30. He's hit hard at the 40-yard line. Down hard on a solid hit. And it'll be good field position for Syracuse at the 44. And that's Tremaine Green who made the, the hit. Or is it Lucky? I believe it was Sterling Lucky who made the hit. A 51-yard hit, but then a return uh, from the 25 up to the 42-yard uh, line, 41-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go for Syracuse, a throw in 41. Maybe a shotgun formation. 1.56 to go, handoff up the middle, goes to fullback Morris, he piled, drives his way to the 49, got eight on the play. Bach running, a minute 46 to go. Red Quasi and John Anderson on the tackle. Two minute drill, Bob, and every team, every team uses it every day, and this is what we're seeing, the two minute drill. Shotgun formation, of course, they don't have to face the yell of the crowd. High snap on the shotgun, back to pass is Mason. He's being rushed. He cuts up field. He's hit at the line of scrimmage, but gets across the 50 into Oklahoma territory at the 49. Not third down. Well, it's a third down play and a little less than a yard to go. Needs to go just across the 49. For the first down, it'll be about a half yard shy. David Campbell on the tackle there for Oklahoma. Again, Syracuse not huddling. 1.16 to go in the game. Oklahoma leading 27-23. They stop the clock for a measurement. And a very smart play by Syracuse. Their captain, if it's close enough, can call for a measurement. Well, it stops the clock, yes. They'll start the clock as soon as the measurement proves good or bad, but it allows Syracuse to have their play called, and they should be at the line of scrimmage ready to go when the chains are put back on the sideline. It's short of the first down by about a half yard, as we knew it was. 1.16 to go in the game. Oklahoma 27, Syracuse 23. Sooners led 24-0 at the half and had a 77-yard pass completion to P.J. Mills, who was running down the sideline for a touchdown. He was hit at the two. Ball knocked free. It was a touchback. And from that point on, which was about uh, seven minutes to go in the uh, third period in that area, it's been Syracuse dominating play. All right, here we go from the 49, third down a yard to go, the Oklahoma 49. Minute 16 left. This time it'll be Kevin Mason under center, not from the shotgun. Split backs behind him. Mason on the quarterback keeper. Leans downfield. And he apparently has the first down for 48. That is the 12th first down of the game for Syracuse. Oklahoma has 18. The ball is at the Oklahoma 48. First down, 10 yards to go. The clock stops while they move the chain. That play took only five seconds. Mason has 42 yards rushing. 110, the clock running now. Shotgun formation, direct snap, of course, to Mason. Back to pass. He steps up the pocket. He throws a pass for Marvin Harrison at the nine. Touchdown, Syracuse. Marvin Harrison on a perfectly thrown pass. 48 yards and a touchdown, and Syracuse takes the lead, 29 to 27. Bob, that's unbelievable. Bob, that's the third time that Oklahoma's been beaten with a long pass tonight. The third time. Well, Marvin Harrison has done it every time he missed the first one. Now we have flags all over the field because of celebrating, and that'll cost Syracuse. And we have this game is not over. Still 101 to go, and the Sooners have a chance to come fighting back. Bob, that penalty will be assessed on the kickoff, so the Sooners will get a break there because that penalty should be assessed on the kickoff for celebration, delay of game. Uh, it will not be here on the extra point. 29-27, they've got to go for two. One point allows Oklahoma to tie them with a field goal. Bob, they got to go for two. You're right about that. Now John Anderson coming over to the Sooner bench to get uh, some instructions from the Sooner bench. 101 to go in the game. Of course, the clock will not start. 
on the extra point attempt, 29-27 in favor of Syracuse. And let's see what the discussion is here. Unbelievable, Bob. It's Unbelievable. an incredible turn of events here in the second half. That is for sure. Sooners led by a score of 24-0. And P.J. Mills was uh, caught a pass going down the sideline where it looked like it would be 31-0. And Syracuse has come roaring back in the second half, to say the least, blocking a punt and with very impressive touchdown drives. And now they score a touchdown on a 48-yard TD pass. And that means that drive started at the uh, Syracuse 41, thrown 41. So it's a 59-yard drive and took them just four plays as Oklahoma was unable to grind out a first down after, you know, to kill the clock after the uh, safety. They were forced to take the safety and then Syracuse hit that pass of 48 yards, 59 yards and four plays. As Mike Trapps pointed out, Syracuse now going for two because they lead by two right now and if the extra point were tacked, that would only be a three-point lead. The Sooners could tie them if they hit the two-point conversion. And then they, of course, will have a four-point lead. And Oklahoma would need to score a touchdown in the last minute of the game in order to beat them. Well, Bob, they're going for one, it looks like, so that the Sooners can tie with a field goal. I guess Syracuse feels that they've come from so far behind, they don't want to put their defense in jeopardy where a field goal would beat them. They've scored four of the six possessions here in the second half. Taking the extra point attempt then will be Sean Reale. This still surprises me. And the quarterback, Kevin Mason. Snap, down, kick in the air. It's no good, he missed it. 29-27, now the Sooners can win with a field goal. He missed the extra point. So how about that? I think there's so many bizarre twists in this game. Well, Bob, there is gonna be a penalty on the kickoff because of the celebration. The Sooners should get decent field position. Now all they have to do is get in field goal range for Scott Blanton, who has been an excellent field goal kicker throughout his career. 29-27 in what has to be the greatest turnaround against Oklahoma that I can remember. Back to the 20. That was for the celebration, as Mike and I both mentioned. So the Sooners will have chances are great field position. And they're 101 with a passing game. Gives you plenty of time to get that ball in field goal range and it may come down to a Scott Blanton field goal attempt. Bob, I think the Sooners have two timeouts left. They called one, and I think they have two left. But again, with the offense, you can stop the clock on offense without timeouts. All right, kicking off will be Olindo Mayer from the 20-yard line. The ball rolls off the kicking tee, and Mayer will have to tee that up again. Well, that was 59 yards and four plays that drive Syracuse and a 48-yard pass perfectly thrown to Marvin Harrison, who, as Mike mentioned, three times got behind the center defense and twice, but he's caught the pass for a touchdown. First time he was open and the pass was overthrown. That was early in the game. 29-27 Syracuse, 101 to go. Syracuse kicking off from their own 20. Orlando Mir kicking off. Waiting the official to signal. Here we go. 101 left. Here's the kickoff. High end over and backing up to take the ball at the 15-yard line is P.J. Mills. He's up the field to the 30. Cuts right at the 35, gets the 36-yard line. Fox stops with 55 seconds to go. Sooners have great field position at their own 36. First down and 10 yards to go. Bob, I think that to have a legitimate shot at a winning field goal, they're going to have to get inside the 30-yard line because that would make it over a 40-yard field goal attempt. So they're going to have to, well, they have 10, 20, 30, about 35 yards to go. All right, Oklahoma will go from the shotgun now with four wide receivers, two to either side. Derek McGee gets the direct snap. He's back to pass. Throws. It's knocked away incomplete. Intended on the near sideline to Terrence Brown and knocked away by Tony Jones. Second down 10 for Oklahoma. That was very nearly intercepted. Sooners were working the sideline hoping to get a short completion and either a long run out of it or step out of bounds to kill the clock. And it was almost picked off. Signals coming in from... Uh, Center offensive coordinator Watson Brown. Terrence Brown is on the lineup. P.J. Mills. Michael McDaniel. Albert Hall. Mills and McDaniel wide left. Right snap from 
the shotgun back to Derek McGee. He steps up in the pocket, throws the pass, incomplete. Thrown over the head of the intended receiver, Michael McDaniel, at about the uh, Syracuse 45, third and 10 from the Oklahoma 36. Bob, if that ball is complete, the Sooners would have been in field goal range, I think. But And it was there. It was just a little bit high, but I thought it might have been a catchable ball. 46 seconds to go in the game. Syracuse leading 29-27. Oklahoma led at one time, 24-0. P.J. Mills and Michael McDaniel to the left. Terrence Brown and Albert Hall to the right. Shotgun formation. Chuck Lockson centers to Derek McGee. Back to pass. He steps up in the pocket. He's tackled for a loss at the 33-yard line. It'll be fourth down play and 13 from the Oklahoma 33 with 35 seconds to go. And the Sooners call timeout to stop the clock. I don't know what McGee was thinking. He was he stepped up in the pocket, and then it looked as though he was going to run the ball, but he was tackled on the play by Wilkie Fazil, the left tackle. Syracuse has just taken the play away from Oklahoma in the second half. There's just no two ways about it, Mike. Well, Bob, you know, you're going to dissect this game from now till the end of the season. It has been a bitter, bitter, bitter type of loss for the Sooners if indeed they don't pull this one out with 35 seconds to go. Everything going their way, a chance to go up 31 to nothing, self-destructing, and yet you never felt that they would lose the game until that last drive. Credit Syracuse, they never gave up. They came back strong, but what a devastating turn of events for Oklahoma as they had this one in the bag. The ball is at the 33-yard line, 13 yards to go on a fourth down play. Oklahoma in its own 33. They need to get to the 46. They're in the field for the first down. They must have that many yards to keep this uh, drive alive to try to get a field goal range. Syracuse leading 29-27 on a drive of 59 yards and four plays after Oklahoma failed to be able to grind out a first down and took a safety. P.J. Mills goes to the left along with Michael McDaniel. Gerald Moore right, Albert Hall right. Shotgun, direct snap to Derek McGee. He's back to pass. He looks upfield. He throws a pass. It's caught by Albert Hall. Sooner's still alive. Out of bounds and the clock stop at the 50-yard line or 49. Yeah, a great pass band a reception by Albert Hall. Sooners are still in it at the 49 in Syracuse territory. 32 seconds to go. And that's the first pass that Hall has called tonight. Credit Garrick McGee. He did not panic. They were putting a severe rush on him. He waited for Hall to make his cut and then delivered a perfect pass. 15-yard pass it was. Oklahoma first and 10 at the Syracuse 49. Again, the shotgun formation. Direct snap to Derek McGee. He's back to pass. He throws downfield. Terrence Brown knocked away incomplete. 26 seconds to go. Second and 10, Oklahoma at the Syracuse 49. Well, that was a great pass, though, that got the first down. Perfectly thrown, and Hall had gotten free on the sideline. Then the incompletion, so second and ten from the Syracuse 49. Well, Bob, they're going to really guard the corners. They know that McGee has got to go to the corner to get the out-of-bounds play. If the Sooners go down the middle, they'll probably have one more shot at a field goal. Terrence Brown and Albert Hall to the right. McDaniel and Mills to the left. Derek McGee back to pass. He looks. He throws down the middle. Incomplete. Mike McDaniel had a shot at it, but couldn't catch it at the 29-yard uh, line. Had his hands on it, leaped high, but didn't catch it. Michael McDaniel, the sophomore, 215 pounder, and now it's a third down and 10 from the Syracuse 49. 21 seconds left to go. Syracuse leading 29 27, and an amazing turn of events. Sooners led 24 0 in the half. McDaniel and Mills wide left. Brown and Hall wide right from the Syracuse 49. McGee from the shotgun again, back to pass. He looks. He throws for the sideline for Hall. Caught. And it's got complete. It's complete. He had one foot in bounds at about the 32-yard line. The play ended in front of the Syracuse bench with 16 seconds to go. And now the ball is at the 31-yard line. And it's first and 10. And here's Scott Blanton in to try the field goal with 16 seconds to go. Bob, I'm not so sure that the Sooners couldn't have thrown one more sideline pass to see indeed. Uh, obviously, they don't have any more timeouts. And Blanton will try a field goal. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. 48-yard field goal attempt. Holding will be Tim Doherty. Snap. Ball is down. Kick is in the air. And it is good. He hit the field goal with 11 seconds to go from 48 yards out. 
incredible, and they're mobbing Scott Blanton, but there's still 11 seconds to go, and it's 30 29 <laughs> Oklahoma. And now a flag is thrown, a penalty will be marked off against Oklahoma for celebrating. The crowd is stunned, Syracuse is stunned, amazing. We're all stunned. The Sooners had it, lost it, got it back, and a missed extra point by Syracuse when we thought they should have gone for two to put it away, Bob. They Un deserved it. They Un deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. 30 to 29. And you know what? I'm not ready to celebrate yet because no, no, there's 11 no. seconds left in this unbelievable football game. Incredible. I don't ever remember a game like this. And Bob, oh, I think the, the wind just drifted it inside the pole for the uh, for the uh, three-pointer. The air conditioning, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Wow, unbelievable. I thought it was going wide left. Did you have that oh, same me too. Me too. 30-29, Oklahoma leads by a point. What a tremendous poised drive by Garrick McGee and Albert Hall. Two key catches. His only two catches of the night. That's right. And Bob, our player of the game, I don't think there's any doubt, it has to be Garrick McGee. Absolutely. Garrick McGee. Okay, the Sooners come out. Now they will be penalized back to the 20 to kick off with 11 seconds to go. Oklahoma leading 30 to 29 on a 48-yard field goal by Scott Blanton, who has had two punts blocked, and he missed a field goal, but he's hit three field goals. Sooners have only two of his three field goals in the second half, as they have scored only six points. But Syracuse missed their extra point when Mike and I thought they should go for two. Yep. I'm glad they didn't. <laughs> P.S. Oh yeah. Now Bland will be kicking off from the 20-yard line from left to right. 11 seconds to go. Sooners leading 30 to 29. And the old Sooner magic's alive and well. So far. Right. Here we go. Scott Blanton from left to right approaches the ball. Ground kick. Squibs it. Across the 50. Picked up by Malcolm Thomas at the 48-yard line. Gets a block. Retreats back to the 45. Clock at four seconds. Three seconds is out of bounds. The reason the Sooners did the squib kick was just what happened. It took a long time to corral it. The clock stopped or started immediately when the ball was touched and was touched by an up man. Yes, it was. And we're down to two seconds. It'll be one play, perhaps, for Syracuse, and we'll see what happens from there. Bob, I have to think that Oklahoma will go to their dime or quarter defense. <laughs> You're going to see a lot of defensive backs, and they're going to be playing as if they were in punt formation because you know the only way Syracuse can win is to throw the bomb a short pass even if they get out of bounds with two seconds the game is over so look for the long bomb they're at the Sooner 47 yard line and the Sooners will really be playing deep all right it'll be the shotgun formation two seconds to go this will be the final play of the game Sooners leading 30 to 29 shotgun weighing the snap from center Kevin Mason back one second, clock has expired, Mason retreats, he's hit, he'll be sacked, and the Sooners win! Oklahoma wins, as Rick DeQuasey makes the sack, and Sooner magic prevails. When it looked like Oklahoma was dead in the water, they came back on a 48-yard field goal, and Coach Gibbs out in the center of the field hugging DeQuasey, and the Sooners celebrating with a hard-earned 30 to 29 incredible win over Syracuse. Wow, what a football game this was as the season opener. Oh, man. We'll have the locker room interviews, which will be very interesting indeed. Our final score is Oklahoma 30, Syracuse 29. We'll be back. This is the Oklahoma Sooner Network. James Hodge Ford Lincoln Mercury celebrating the biggest event of the year, the 94 clearance sale. Room must be made for the sleek new 95 models. James Hodge Ford offers you 2.9% interest and up to 2,000 cash rebate on selected vehicles.